up happy tuesday everybody welcome in or as we say in philadelphia tuesday uh it is sports <laughs> take he is tone de shields i am rob ellis what's up Tone? what's the hat man what would what, what, have a have a great day With have a good day hat? man have, have a good day Okay. Have a, have a good day, you guys. You know, got a little cowboy hat there with some hearts right there. Have a good day, you guys. That's what it's all about, man. Listen, no matter what's going on uh, throughout your day, man, maybe you stubbed your toe, maybe you got a bad phone call, but the re but regardless, you have to have a good day, man. You got to leave with that and believe that it's going to be a good day. That's how it always should start. Wake up and I say like today is going to be a good day, regardless envision. of what happens. Envision it, man. You know, you got to manifest it, it. it into existence. I agree with you. Exactly. I agree with you. What's up, Fram? Who do we have here? Let's see. All right. I'm going to start with Flexin and Steppen. Then I'm going to go Bry Guy. Then I'm going to go Solvin. Flexin. Then I'm going to go Scat. Steppen. What's going on, yes. my man? They go James. Go I Am Awake. I'm going to go Jason. ARS. Uh, I think I got uh, Solvain. I got you. Let's see. Who else? Didn't I get Pickle? Uh, hi. Hi, Philly. Uh, Robert and Blue Torian. Hope you guys are all doing great out there uh, on this Tuesday. We have just nine days left of the month of February. What's up, Jared? Just nine days left of February. And that's that's, um, that's a little intimidating for me. <laughs> that's a little intimidating. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess a week from Friday, um, it will be March. So we're we're moving, man. We're getting we're getting warm. We are getting warm, that's for sure. First quarter is almost done. First quarter. Yes, yes. Um, all right. So interestingly enough, today is the first day that NFL teams could apply the franchise or transition tag to players. And, you know, there's definite candidates out there. You could have the Giants going down that same road again with Saquon Barkley. There's other players. And we're going to get into, throughout the course of the show, the best available free agents on the defensive side. We're going to look at defensive line. We're going to look at linebacker. And we're going to look at secondary and look at the best players that are available at those positions. So we'll do that. We're also going to take a look at which Eagles are free agents and tell you what they made last year and tell you if maybe, you know, they're, they're going to be back or they're going to be gone. We'll play back or by with that. We'll look at some of the strengths of this Eagles team because we've done a lot of rightfully so, you know, critiquing some of the issues. Um, so we'll, we'll get into all that. But I guess I'll just start with this one, Tone. Mm. The Eagles don't generally use the franchise tag. It's not something they they think is – is smart business. It's not something they like to do. It's right. not something you see a whole lot of. Uh, do you think anybody will be franchise tagged that is a free agent for the Eagles? No, no. You brought up, you brought up something, right? The Eagles historically don't really do that. They've done it maybe once or twice in the past this century. I know they did it with Deshaun Jackson at one point, um, but that's just not something that's not something they believe in. And I actually respect it. I actually hate the franchise tag. Um, I hate it for the player. And I hate it for the organization. Um, obviously, it's a last resort to give you some extra time to get a deal done with a guy. But overall, I've never been a fan of them. For one, I don't think they do a good job at actually allocating the proper resources to each position. I feel like they lump together too many positions like linebacker and D-line. Like there's a like edge rushers are very different than your prototypical inside linebackers. Right. And then you got your DNs and your edge rushers. It, it, it gets too convoluted. And then the O lineman, it's just one tag for the O lineman. There's guards, there's centers, there's tackles, and there's a pay tier for each of those positions, especially left tackle and right tackle. So to lump all those guys together kind of makes it, um, kind of makes it a little wonky in my opinion. But I think that also, um, incentivizes teams to actually get the deal done 
rather than to fall on a franchise tag, I think if the franchise tag was too flexible for teams, maybe teams would use it a lot more. So um, that's one way of looking at it. But overall, Eagles don't use it. I don't think they're going to franchise tag anybody. No one on his roster currently worth franchise tagging. Um, and I respect it. Either you're going to get the deal done or you won't. And I think, and I like the Eagles for being upfront about that. It's not happening. I mean, if you look at it, you're not going to franchise tag Jason Kelsey. We know it's, just, it's going to come down to his decision right. whether or not he wants to come back. Yeah. Fletcher Cox is not going to be franchise tagged because the tag for defensive tackles is well above the 10 million that he made last year, right? Mm -hmm. Then then you go, I mean, really the other guys aren't. I mean, Brandon Graham, it's not happening, right? Uh, any of the Zach Cunninghams of the world, it's not happening. Uh, all due respect, Devontae, uh, 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 DeAndre, excuse me, DeAndre Swift, I want him back, but you're not going to franchise tag him at, at over 10 million a year. It's not happening. So it makes zero financial sense for any of these guys uh, that are free agents for the Eagles. They're not in that position that maybe some other teams are. And you know what the franchise tag really is, Tone? It's a way to sort of hold these guys and and and, and control them to an extent as you renego as you try to negotiate a deal and get it done. You know, we saw it with a couple of guys last year. Saquon Barkley was one of them, what Chris Jones was one of them, whatever. And they end up, you know, kind of going through the machinations of this thing. And then it gets done at the very end of the season, a very end you know, generally right before the season starts, like Chris Jones was one game in, I believe, but Saquon went right before that. So think about, all right, so just uh, good. I'm glad you put this up there. So this is what the projected tag would be for these guys. Okay. Transition uh, tenders, et cetera. Okay. So let's go, let's just go defensive tackle for Fletcher Cox, just for example. Okay. No chance he's getting franchised at 20 or transitioned at 15. He would want that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Fletcher would say, oh, oh, okay, yeah, cool. All right, let's go. So that's not happening. I, I, I just, just again, run through some of these other – let's go to running back. They're not bringing back Swift at either 11 or 10. They're not bringing in any running back mm -hmm. at that price, okay? So yeah. it, it just – and it really doesn't apply to many of the other positions. Like the free agents at, at offensive line, we'll get into this, are like – Jack Driscoll and Sua Opeta. They're not even in this conversation. So Right, right, exactly. They don't have any free agents that are even close to yeah. being valued at these numbers. Exactly. Yeah, Brandon Graham, he's, we love him, older guy. He's looking at a league minimum if he's coming back. He's not looking at 20 or 20 uh, for, for a defensive end or edge or whatever you want to call the position that he plays. That's not happening, you know. So the answer is no. There aren't going to be any Eagles, in my opinion. Good job pulling that up, Tone. But I don't Absolutely. think I don't think this applies to any of these guys. Uh, that are on the Eagles. Some some players who have some teams who have younger guys. Yes, yes. Okay, it makes a little bit of sense if you're trying to get something done and you can't get it done. Yeah. That, Perfect that. example: Brian Burns in Carolina. That's a great um, example. He's going yeah. through a conversation right now or a negotiation process with the, with the Panthers, and um, so far, based on what I read, they're not really coming to a uh, a middle ground. He's looking for. He's looking for he's Nick Bosa, T.J. Watt, Miles Garrett numbers. He's looking for numbers close to thirty. And I mean, he's Japan, really good, man. No, no, he's crazy. great. He's yeah. great. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not even taking nothing away from him. You know, yeah. get your coin, brother. These teams don't care about you. You know, you shouldn't care about them. Mm -hmm. Um, but overall, um, that just that just puts into perspective the type of player that you're going to be looking at to probably get franchise tags. Like for example, uh, the corner in Chicago, Jalen Johnson. He's a prime franchise tag candidate. Yep. Um, rumor, rumor is they haven't really come to an agreement yet. He's a young player. He's only going to get better. They really want to keep him. They likely will franchise tag him. Um, yeah, players like that is always the guys that are really come. You're really going to see it with those guys coming off of their rookie deals. You don't really see it beyond that. Yeah, it's correct. Yeah. And, and again, a lot of this applies to older Eagles that, that we would even have this conversation for. So we're going to get into it. We're going to run through all the main free agents and do the back or buy, whether you think they're back or whether you say bye bye to them mm. uh, in, in a second here. I, I did also, Tone, want to run through the state of Philadelphia sports. It's always good to kind of step back and examine where we are with the with the four teams. I'm not including the union or anything like that. Eagles, right. Phillies, Sixers, Flyers. The, the power just, four. Yeah, the four for four. Uh, and examine kind of where we're at. Because I and I want to start with the Eagles because I think we're in a kind of a weird place with the Eagles. What I mean by that mm. is, you know, the, the team did make the playoffs last year, but we know how it ended. We know how poor it was. And generally, if you lose seven of eight football games, your coach is getting fired. Generally. The difference is they won, you know, their 10 of, uh, 10 of their first 11 games. So we survived. Um, they're in a weird place because they're they're sort of at the mercy of a couple of older players. 
Uh, one of them being Kelsey, they're not sure, and it'll be Kelsey's call. Another one, Fletcher Cox, I think it depends on what he's looking for financially. Um, so you're you're in a bit of a holding pattern there. And then you're really short of talent on the defensive side of the ball. So there's a lot of things that have to go right this offseason. Like you can see a pathway to the offense being really good. But right now it's tough to see that from the defensive side. So you're certainly not in, in a bad place, but you are in kind of a weird place right now with the Eagles. Yeah, you know, you, you have some contracts that are going that are going to be coming up for the Philadelphia Eagles over the next couple of years, over the next few years that are really going to determine the future of this team. Um, not just this upcoming offseason. Um, you know, when it comes to free agency for, for the Philadelphia Eagles this offseason, I don't really know if there's any players that I'm dying to keep, except for obviously Kelsey and Fletcher Cox. Um, maybe Swift if the numbers make sense and they and they pair him with the power back. But other than that, I mean, there's no one really that um, I'm dying to keep this offseason. But, you know, when you think about the upcoming contracts um, for the Philadelphia Eagles, um, you know, let's just really put this thing in perspective here. So active contracts, you know, you got guys like Devontae Smith coming up very soon. Yep. Um, you have uh, Devontae Landon Dickerson. Landon Dickerson coming up very soon. Um, uh, Jordan Melada's contract is going to need to be re-upped um, within the next couple years or so. Uh, Josh Sweat. Um, Milton Williams, what are you going to do with him? He's entering a contract year. You know, when, when you factor all that stuff in, it's like, okay, we're getting into the the core of this team. You're going to have to make a decision um, yeah. after this season whether or not you're going to uh, pick up Jordan Davis's fifth-year option. Mm -hmm. you know, Howie always likes to stay ahead of things, too. Keep that in mind. He always – and, again, it doesn't always come to play with, with some – but a lot of times he's ahead of this. Exactly. Exactly. He does a great job with the numbers, but overall they have a lot of decisions to make. Darius Slay, he's in the second to last year of his deal. How long will he be able to play at the level he's playing at? Do you you, you have to start thinking about the future there? So there are, there are just several positions where you look at the Philadelphia Eagles and say you need depth. And also you're going to have to start considering moving on from certain guys as they get to the twilight or the back end of the career. You know, we're going to talk about this as the show progresses. Sure. Um, th there's a couple guys I brought up to you in our meeting mm -hmm. that I think the Philadelphia Eagles need to consider uh, what the future looks like with those guys, if it's either on their terms or our terms. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we are going to dive into that. Um, that's for sure. So uh, that's where kind of where we are with the Eagles. I, it's certainly, if you do the right things, and Howie has a history of this, if you do the right things, they're right back in the mix because the NFC is unique. San Francisco might fall prey to what we see a lot of teams fall prey to, Tone, where it's tough to get there and or win it and then bounce back the next year. Uh, it, you know, we, we just, for whatever reason, it's very difficult. They have a tough decision to make with Brandon Ayuk. You know, there's other things that they have to to deal with. Yeah, so really they, quickly, they, what the yeah. NFL does a great job of, um, some some may, some fans may say, no, this is terrible, but what they do a great job of, they, they do a great job of making it difficult for teams to maintain success. Right. And I and I think that creates parity in the league and it really forces these GMs to really do their jobs. You know, it forces um, guys to get creative. Um, it makes the league that much more competitive. You know, there are some leagues where you can quite literally buy a championship. Right. You load your in, in, in the NBA. If you got the best players, you're likely going to win the championship. Yeah. In the NFL, it doesn't necessarily work like that. And yeah. I think they do a great job of just making sure that you have to stay on your P's and Q's financially and. Uh, from a talent perspective as well. All right, so let, that's the birds. Um, let's go. Let's go next to the Phillies. The window is certainly now. Yes, um, and you know we're going to talk about them in a little bit. But you have Bryce Harper, you have Real Muto, you have Schwarber, you have Castellanos, you have Turner. These guys are all around the same age. They're all mm -hmm. 30, 31, you know, twenty nine, whatever. They're 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 in that the sort of peak years, if you will. Right now. Um, they're set up pretty well this year. They have to get a deal done with Wheeler, and we'll get into the Harper extension thing that he wants in, in a second. But it, it's win now time. John Middleton, their owner, came out flat out and said, "You know, it, it is it is time to get back the bleeping trophy." His words. Okay. He also said that I'm still pissed off about the Diamondbacks' defeat in the NLCS. I hope they all are in the clubhouse. That that dude is not playing around. He's not giving you the. Hey, if things go, no, he's saying we need to win it this year. Like it's time. So there's an urgency with this team. And I like that. I like that the heat's turned up by the owner on this group. I'm good with that. Like that's what it should be with this team. There should absolutely be a sense of urgency. I know how talented the Dodgers and Braves are. 
but I know how talented they were the last couple of years, and they still didn't make it to the World Series. So it is time for this Phillies team to deliver. You know, it's interesting. I think baseball is another sport where it doesn't matter how much money you spend or if you have the most talented guys, it all has to work in concert, right? And I think the Philadelphia Phillies have shown over the past couple of seasons that they have an ability to um, bridge that gap between talent and cohesion and chemistry. Yep. I think the owner is right for his mentality. When you make it to the World Series, to a game six with the Houston Astros, give, give them give them all they can handle. And then you lose in the NLCS to what many felt an inferior but young and, 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 and spunky Arizona Diamondbacks team. When you think about the way they lost that series, the way they just handed it to the Diamondbacks, I don't think the Diamondbacks took it. I think the, I think the Phillies folded. I agree that's, with you. That, that's totally. firmly what I believe. I watched all those matchups, and I think they folded. Yep. And we can and we can nitpick why and all that kind of stuff. It's not really what it's about. The bottom line is the time is now. Mm-hmm. You got Bryce Harper um, on a big deal who's trying to get more money out of you. Uh, you got Trey Turner on a big deal. Hopefully he can put things together this season. He started off late last year. Um, you got Cassianos who can be streaky. Um, you got Kyle Schwarber um, who's an older guy. Um, you have uh, Zach Wheeler, that contract. You got to figure that out. You got Aaron Nola. You just gave him big money. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, they've made so many moves. You, you have a great young nucleus, right, with, with Stott and uh, and Baum and Marsh. Right, you, This team is quite poised to win it all. They have everything they need, top to bottom. Now, every roster has their deficiencies. You're never going to have the perfect roster. But when you look at this team from top to bottom, you say to yourself, oh, top five team in baseball, top five, maybe a top three roster in baseball. Maybe. You never know. It's debatable. Right. But again, the time is now. Yeah. And when you come that close – it gets harder and harder and harder every time, just the mental perspective, because when you get there, you see, you say to yourself, OK, there's a lot of pressure. You don't want to be that team that, that that's always what if. Right. This is this is a very this is a potent era in Philadelphia Phillies history. If they don't maximize this, if, if they don't get a World Series out of this out of this nucleus, they've they've, they've uh, accumulated. This could probably go down as one of the bigger letdowns in Philly's yeah. history. We're going to look back highly disappointed that this team couldn't cash one. <clears throat> we just are uh, because they, they have they have spent. John Middleton's done his part. He's tried. Yeah, you know he has put he has backed it up with his cash. You so, said something earlier in our meeting. Um, they were ready to back the Brinks truck up for uh, was a Yamamoto. Yamamoto, yeah. So they made a bigger offer. So Yamamoto from the Dodgers got twelve years, three hundred twenty five million from the Dodgers. The Phillies made him a bigger offer than that. Now, like to me, that's where you just say. What else can I do, man? The guy wanted to go to L.A. He wanted to be with Otani. It, 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 from a geographical standpoint, it works better for him to get back and forth from Japan. All those kind of things. You, you, there's nothing else you can do. You made him the biggest offer out there. He, he chose not to go with it. Okay. But that tells me there's a commitment from management to try and win this thing. There is no cutting corners. And I love that about the you, Phillies. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Yep. And I respect it, man. Baseball is that kind of sport where you could throw your money around. Yeah. And I... You, you got to give kudos to ownership and, you know, uh, the front office for doing everything possible to try to get the best people in the building. You know, Harry Roseman, we can say we won't, we can say what we want about him at any given moment. We can nitpick the, the decisions he's made. But overall, I've always respected Nick's, uh, I've always respected Howie Roseman for taking the swings that he's taken, especially in season, like in 2022, bringing in Sue, Linval Joseph, um, even making a move for Robert Quinn. Did it pan out? No, but. That had a high risk level. That that had a high um, ceiling of a move. If yeah. you know, it, you he know, had if a great year out. before, and they right. took, they took a gamble, and the guy was cooked. It just happens, sometimes. right? And and look again, I'm never going to criticize the team for swinging, especially yep. when you know you're on the cusp. I'm never going to criticize you for that. Yeah. Um, all right. So let, then let's let's jump to the Sixers. So here's what the way I view the Sixers. They, they they may have the most question marks, even more than the Flyers. The Flyers, we kind of know what it is, which we'll you know I'll get to in one second. So we sit here and we don't know if Embiid's going to be able to come back this season. If he does come back, how healthy he's going to be? How's the knee? How's his conditioning? How are these guys going to acclimate around him? I personally, you know this, I'm a little bit more bullish on the Sixers than most. I I feel like they start playing again on Thursday. Letting some of these guys play together before Joel comes back could let them get some cohesion and understanding of who they all are Uh, Mm -hmm. because they haven't had healed with Melton, with Batum, and with Harris for the most part. Let those guys all play together. And Bede hopefully gets a couple of weeks back to get himself right. And then you sneak up on some people in the playoffs and you could do some damage. I, I, I am 
a little more optimistic than most. I understand the pessimism from Sixers fans, but I'm I, I see a little bit more rays of, of of sunshine here with the Sixers than some do. Yeah, I can understand why you would feel that way. Uh, I, I guess I guess for me, I'm always going back and forth on whether I should believe in this team or not. And one of the reasons that it makes it so hard to really get a strong beat on them is because your best player is always hurt in these key moments of the season or in the playoffs. He's always dealing with something. Right. And even with him, there's been this constant trend of not getting past the second round. Could this be different? It's possible. You know, we've seen the Sixers in situations where they've had shooters around Joel B. Remember the Urson Sova, J.J. Yeah. Redick, Bellinelli, Bellinelli era. You know, that was yeah. a – that was a, you know, those guys are pretty good shooters, you know, especially at that time. Um, so when I think about it from that perspective, I don't want to get my hopes too high for this team. I want to continue to just tread lightly with them. I understand, again, why you're bullish. They've made some moves that, that make you optimistic. All, on top of that, they have a ton of, or they're going to have a ton of financial flexibility going into this offseason. Um, if there's any season I'm more bullish about, it's the 2025 uh, um, campaign rather than um, this campaign. And that's where they're going to be able to operate big time. Like that's yeah. where, if, if you're not familiar with the situation, really it's Embiid, and and you know Maxi's going to be resigned. So you're going to have two you know big pieces, but everybody else literally is a free agent. Everybody else, you can clear the deck and be a player for either a free agent or to make a trade because you have a lot of first rounders too. You're you're this is exactly what Daryl Morey has kind of dreamed of. It's all set up right there in this off season for him to be able to really really do some things um yeah but, I'll, I'll add this in as well i am more yeah. optimistic about the coaching job than, that's than the other part than years past and that can go a long way um especially when it comes to playoff matchups you know handling your rotations um making adjustments when it matters most um playing you know playing the best guys on the court um based on series you know when, when you get when you get to your rotational guys at that point you you want to make sure you have the best matchups on the court sometimes okay maybe maybe melton didn't have as productive as a season as Buddy Hill, right? But maybe right. Melton works better for this series because of the matchups. And I th and I am encouraged by Nick Nurse um, in that regard. I think I, I see him as a coach that's going to be creative, make the right adjustments, going to put the right players on the court when it matters most. Um, there was a lot of um, uh, uh, previous coaches in Philadelphia Sixers history, especially the past couple guys, Doc, uh, Doc Rivers and um, – Brett Brown before Brett that. Brown, they were they were kind of married to their system. They were kind of married to you know their beliefs and their process. And you can't be so married to your process where you can't really see uh, the forest from the trees. You know what I mean? You you, you got to be creative, especially in those playoff situations. And you got to have you got to have more of a a, a modern mindset. When yeah, it comes Nick to Nurse is an situations. adjuster, man. He's an adapter. Whereas Doc, it was like this is what we do. Let's perfect this. And I don't think that's a good way to go, man. Sounds like someone we know uh, with the Eagles, right? Let's let's keep doing what we're doing and perfect it. <laughs> it does sound like that a little bit. Did Doc sneak in there to the uh, to the to the Sixers or to the, <laughs> the Eagles? Um, all right. Lastly, the Flyers. Now, this is the one that I think is sort of the most clear. I mean, they're kind of like with the Phillies. Like you know what it is? They're in the early stages of a rebuild. They've overachieved this season. They've they've shown you to have some good young core pieces that you can build on that you want to be a part of this thing going forward there's other guys that in the next uh the, the eighth is the is the trade deadline so the next 17 days they're that are, that are going to be shown the door now it doesn't mean that they're bad players but they're going to get they could get decent return for these guys to help you continue to build this thing the only question i really have is tone now the goaltending thing's up in the air because carter hart may never play for the flyers again that's the problem yeah yeah and it, and it kind of puts uh which i got you know, what's our guy's name uh east uh What's the current oh, Airson, Airson, Airson. I almost say Eason. Excuse me, you yeah. guys. Hockey's not my first love. Follow me here. Um, yeah. Airson. Um, they kind of left him on the island. You yeah. know, he. You know, now, now he has to play well above, you know, the standard. Well, you know, well above what the expectations were. You know, he was playing well. Um, still is playing. You know, fairly well. But I think my my biggest fear when it comes to him is, you know, can will the motor still run hot come playoff time? You know, you know, will he be able to still maintain, you know, his level of production mm -hmm. because of so much pressure being put on him because of the Carter Hart situation? But nonetheless, though, I think you said something very key when it comes to the Flyers. Their their, their path, what, oh, let me, not their path. Let me say this: their intention is yeah. very clear. Yep. We know they're not trying to win the Stanley Cup this year. We know that they're not trying to swing for the fences. 
they're trying to build something stable and sustainable. And I can respect that. Agreed. Agreed. And I, I think we're all, I think everybody understands and appreciates the candor. The Flyers haven't tried to BS you. They, they've laid it out that we're building this thing. It's going to take a minute. Bear with us. But we're, we're looking to do this differently than we did it the last 10, 15 years where we were sort of putting Band-Aids on things. We, you know, we got we realized we got to we got to kind of gut it and get this thing right. So I, I think that's why people are appreciative of what the effort is from the Flyers. Let me ask you this question, Rob. You said yeah. something interesting. The Flyers are very transparent about where they are in their process. I want, out of the four teams we mentioned, I want you to rank them from. Most transparent to least transparent, most honest to least honest. You know what I mean? I want mm-hmm. you to rank them. One being the most honest and transparent, um, four being the least honest and transparent. I want you to rank all four organizations: Eagles, Phillies, um, Flyers, Sixers. All right, I would go. Flyers are the most upfront about what it is. So I'm gonna go Flyers number one. Uh number two, I think the Phillies are pretty transparent. I think John Middleton is saying to you, I'm spending, I expect us to win. Let's go, fellas. Now it's your turn. There's not a lot of gray area there, so that's pretty transparent. Parent. Um, I think the Eagles and the Sixers can be dodgy. They can both be dodgy at what's going on, what the true issue is, uh, what what the true intent is to some degree. I still don't really know, Tone, and I don't expect them to come out publicly and just crush people, but I don't really know how much was Nick how much was Brian Johnson? How much was Sean Desai? How much was Matt Patricia? How much was Howie? I, I you know, in, in in that collapse, how much was the players? It, it, it's hard to sort of sift through the rubble of what that turned into. I, I the Sixers have been an organization that I with Josh Harris that I've always found w- was never quite as upfront as I would want would have liked them to be. be. So I'd probably go Eagles and Phillies really on the same tier if you want to put them as a tie. Then I would go. I mean Flyers and 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 Phillies. Then I would go Eagles Sixers would be my order. It, that's exactly um what my thought process was. I think the Flyers and the Phillies have been the most upfront about where they are and what they expect from their team and the, you know and you know and, and their coaches. When it comes to the Eagles, you're right. And the Sixers, they both have been historically known for being dodgy. Mm-hmm. Um not necessarily being as upfront or candid rather uh as they potentially could be. And let me ask you this. Yeah. Before we go to break here, when it comes to the Sixers and the Eagles, because we've already accepted who the Flyers and the Phillies are, their intentions are very clear. When it comes to the Eagles and Sixers, why do you believe they've established this dodginess uh, amongst their ranks? I think the Sixers at, at times can't get out of their own way. Uh, and that begins up top. I think Josh Harris has been a willing spender, but I just don't think he's very good. At, at, at doing it. Um, mm. and he I, seems like the kind of person to me, sorry to cut you off, Rob, yeah. I apologize. Um, yeah. Josh Harris seems like the kind of person to throw money at a situation. and think it'll fix it. Yes. He strikes me as that kind of person. Yeah. Um, and that, I think, I, and I think that's part of it. I, I don't know that he has the ability. He's a brilliant businessman. Nobody's going to argue that he's a billionaire, but I, in terms of running a team, it's a different animal. Sometimes you got to be able to dr- drill down and really find out what's going on with your front office. Like, I, I thought he made a mistake, a lot of mistakes over the years. Um, he was enamored with Doc Rivers. He was he, not only Doc, forget Doc for a minute, the whole debauchery of the front office stuff that went on when he allowed the league to force Sam Hinkie out. He, they, he allowed them to sort of plug in Jerry Colangelo for a minute, who then in turn hired his son, which is a joke. Uh, and I think ever since then they've been spinning their wheels. So I, I think there's a there's a lack of just just institutional understanding of the sport uh, that you have with the with the Sixers. And then with the Eagles, I think there's more intent there. I don't I don't think they feel like they have to show their hand as much as uh, maybe some other organizations do. They're not as as upfront. Like I don't think you'd have a Jeffrey Lurie conversation like like Scott Lauber of the Inquirer had with John Middleton, where he said some of the things that he said. They just play it closer to the vest. That's just sort of their modus operandi. Um, so I, I think with with Harris, it's it's more unintentional. And with the Eagles, it's more intentional. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would tend to agree. I think the Eagles, theirs is more ego-driven. Yes. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah. What, yeah. Ego, any way you want to phrase it, I, I think there's more – 
covert. Like they don't feel like they should give away the trade secrets uh, mm-hmm. publicly. And I also think it, it, it has worked for them because they have a, definitely a good core. But I also wonder if their their unwillingness to to move on philosophy. Like I'm going to show you in a minute what they paid their starting linebackers this year, and it's like, come on, man, it's not acceptable. So I think those things are 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 an issue with the Eagles. But yeah, I would I would definitely. go Flyers and Phillies definitely first on those lists. Um, okay. All right, let's hit it. Let's come back and we'll do back or buy. We're going to lay out the Eagles free agents and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about whether they come back or not. I, Tone, here's my guess. We're going to have one heck of a lot more buys than backs. Just my guess. So we'll get into that when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Tone to Shields, Rob Ellis with you on this Tuesday. We're sports take. Let's talk about Bravo Pizza of Habertown. Yes, been going there since I was a kid. Family owned since 1985. Pop in there. I see Alex and the crew each and every week, and they're doing an amazing job. Great variety. The most fresh food you could possibly have. They have 20 different styles of pizza. You want to get in and out, slices to go. Uh, They have specialized pizza. So unique to whatever you like, they will make for you. But they don't just do pizza. They do fresh pasta sandwiches, wraps, wings, salads. Bravo Pizza is also committed to the community. They have fundraisers for charity, schools, little leagues, where the proceeds go to those organizations. You can follow them at the Bravo Pizza of on Instagram and Facebook for daily specials and promotions. They're located at 1305 Westchester Pike Manoa Shopping Center in Havertown, Pennsylvania, 1305 Westchester Pike Manoa Shopping Center, Havertown, PA. Give them a call, 610-446-3810, 610-446-3810. More on Bravo Pizza of Havertown. I remember getting my heart broken when they lost the Super Bowl in 2004. We were big Eagles fans. We moved to South Philly because of the Eagles. When they won, we went straight to Broad Street and uh, everybody was going nuts over there. And it was just a, a memory that you'll never forget. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. At Pond Lee Hockey, we've recovered billions of dollars for our clients, and we're confident we can do the same for you. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, we've helped over 100,000 injured clients obtain some of the largest settlements in Pennsylvania. One conversation is all it takes to help you and your family get back on track. If you've been injured in an accident, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Champions on three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their Fantasy Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday, watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game 
and the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. For the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Thanks for hanging with us. We appreciate it. That's Tone. I'm Rob. We are Sports Take on this Tuesday. All right, let's look at free agents for the Eagles. Tone, back or buy? Back or buy? Um, and I'll give you what they made this past year. So, all right, Jason Kelsey, uh, 14.2 mm. million. You know, it, it, it's it's obviously sort of the balls in his court here. Let me ask you this, though. Mm-hmm. Let's say he came back at the, at the Eagles and said, I want 17. Ooh, wee. Hmm. I, I'm being as 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 upfront as I can with them. I'm saying, Jason, we we can't we can't go up, man. We we everybody here wants you back. We value what you do. You're a future Hall of Famer, but we can only allot so much for the center position. What do you do there? What do you, what do you do if you're the birds? If he if he just hypothetically, that number. Fourteen number, feels like a max for me. Is, is I guess right. where I'm going. I put you this way, right? Yeah. Um. In 2024, well, let me put you this way. Uh, in 2023, excuse me. In 2023, Jason Kelsey was the highest paid center in football. Yeah. Already. Already. At 14.2 million. Excuse me. The next closest guy was Frank Ragnall with the with with Detroit. At 13.5. And then you have Ryan Jensen at 13 million, Corey Lindsley at 12.5 million with the Chargers, uh, Ryan Kelly and Indy with 12.5, Eric McCoy at 12, Cody Whitehair at 10.2, um, so on and so forth. So again, um, Jason Kelsey was the only the only center at that 14 million dollar price point. For him to want to jump from 14 million all the way to 17 million, that that, that doesn't even coincide with the market for centers. So that would just be unfair and astronomical and, quite frankly, unreasonable. Um, that doesn't seem like who he is, but again, it was a hypothetical. So yeah, I, mean, yeah. I'm, you know, yeah, I, I don't think mom. it would be that. I, I'm, I guess I'm all, I, I use 17 just as a number, but of course, of course. I, can't, I can't go any higher than that, like I guess is what I'm driving at in any way, shape, or form. If and, I'm already paying him 14.25, if he wanted 15, I wouldn't mind giving it to him. All right. All me right. I, I would. I would. Me, me personally. Um, yeah, I try damn hard to keep him where he is. But yeah, I hear. Of course, you. Of, course of course, of course. The goal is always to <laughs> buy low, right? That's always yeah. the goal. You don't want to just give away money. But if he uh, came back and told me, "Look, all right, last year you guys had me," and here's another thing that we have to keep in mind as well: these aren't just, you know, just the average salaries. This is what you know. At this point, just in case Jason Kelsey's career over the past couple seasons, he's been operating off of fully guaranteed contracts. He's been on year. He's been on year to year deals, correct? And, he, and they've been fully guaranteeing the contracts, you know, to show commitment to him, and to kind of, and also to make it worth his while. So, if they tell him, "Look, last year we we gave you fourteen point two fourteen point two five million straight up, you know, no strings attached, guaranteed that 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 went right into your pocket," you know, we're willing we're willing to give you that same number again, right in your pocket, no strings attached, and and that's what players care about: no strings attached to the money. Does it go right into my bank account? Right. And if it, 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 you can if you can get him to roll with that, um, I think that'll be reasonable. Again, unless one of these other centers pushes the uh, pushes the market forward, I think you have a stronger chance of keeping Kelsey at that fourteen between fourteen and fifteen million dollar pay uh, pay rate. I like this question from Dan, uh, and he says, "Who's more important, Kelsey or Lane?" I would say Kelsey. That's right? fascinating. Here, here's why I would say I don't Kelsey. Know. That's that's. That, I don't know if it's that is that if it's that simple. That's oh, I don't think it's cut and dry. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you're talking about two guys who I think are going to be in the Hall of Fame. Kelsey's a lock, and I think Lane Johnson gets in. So you're yeah. talking about two great players, okay? And, and you're talking about what, both guys who I think, <clears throat> excuse me, are the are still the best at their positions. I think Lane's the best at right tackle, and I think Kelsey's the best at center. But when you're talking about calling out protections and some of the other things that Kelsey does the, and the issues that, that the quarterbacks particularly have when, when a blitz is coming straight on, I, I'd slight lean Kelsey. I don't think this is a slam dunk, man, but 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 I would slight lean Kelsey on this one. Are you going lane? Mm. 
No, I'm not going Lane at all. I'm going um I'm going Kelsey. It's still it's still again not as cut and dry, but I think my mindset goes to my mindset goes to Jason Kelsey. And the one the one selling point for me, quite frankly, yeah, is availability. Jason Kelsey hasn't missed hasn't missed a game in what six years, seven years? Yes, roughly. Yeah, that, that's I'm, a great I'm, point. I'm, I'm durability. Guessing. Yep. You know, um, when it comes to Lane Johnson, although he did play in and start 16 games for the Eagles, um, I don't know how stable those ankles are. I don't know. Like, Lane's been beat up a lot through his career. Lane, yes. Lane, Lane, Lane has dealt with some legitimate medical issues. I would much rather roll the dice with my guy that's calling the protections. On top of that, he's an Iron Man. Doesn't, doesn't miss games. Whereas Lane, good point. 21. Only played in 13 games, 2022, 15 games, 2023, 16 games out of a 17 game season. Remember, in 2020, only gave you seven games, but everybody was hurt that year. Um, only person that stood the test of time was Jason Kelsey. Um, 2019, only gave you 12 games. You know, when you go through Lane's injury history, he's he's dealt with some things that don't really bode well for guys his size at his age. Uh, I think I think Kelsey is more important. For the availability standpoint, let me jump on this one from Daz. Good point on availability, but Lane is out and we lose. Here's my You're, pushback. Okay, Here's so pushback. there's but there's two. There's that that's a two prong thing. Right, they do lose. You, 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 Lane, you, you go first. Okay, so they do lose when Lane's out, but Kelsey's never out, so there's Bingo. no way to measure it. You can't measure it. It's easy right. to say, yeah, when Lane's out, we lose. There's a right. there's a there's a real metric for that, but the fact that we have that metric is actually an indictment on him. Yeah, like Kelsey, um, we don't know what it is because he doesn't miss games. And again, I'm not ripping exactly. Lane when I say this. Yeah, Lane, yeah it's not that, that dude's out there with a, a torn body in in 2022. Right. Yeah, I mean, listen, Lane is one of one. Yeah, but, but your but, but I'm your point that. is your point is very strong, and I yeah. and I think that's exactly where I was going with it. We can't say that for Kelsey because he never misses a game. Yeah, you begin to take a guy like that for granted. Yes, you know what I mean. Lane, he's missed so many games start his career. It's it's a legit it's a legit metric. You yeah. know what I mean? If Lane never missed games, we do, we don't even have that conversation. I so, uh, so I think it's an unfair um, comp in that yeah. regard. I understand what you were trying to do, Daz, and I think and I think you were thinking critically. Yeah. But yeah. at the same time, you got to think about the fact that Kelsey doesn't miss games at all. Right, and of and course they they, they you get like spoiled he, by it. Daz said we lose when Kelsey's, and I know he's joking, but yeah, they lose when Lane's in there sometimes too. But it, the, the point being, that's look, funny. <laughs> you don't want either one of them gone. Okay, right. let's be real right. about this. Okay, but the the truth of the matter is, when it comes to if I had to really boil it down, man, and you're making me for forcing me, I'm leaning Kelsey. You know, mm. that's it. Um, and yeah, that's it. And, and that's what, and Dan, I agree. That's what I was saying about that. You're right on with setting the protections and that kind of thing. I think he does help uh, Jalen in a lot of ways with that. Exactly. Especially a young quarterback who's still learning right. about what he's seeing in front of him. Yeah. I think it's important for Hurts to have a guy like Kelsey in the building. That's why I want Kelsey back at whatever, at whatever price point, And I'll make yeah. it work. All right, so I guess here's where I'm at, man. And I I have flipped and flopped like a flounder. Like I I am I am like a fish when it comes to this. I'm slightly leaning towards he doesn't come back, and that's his choice, not the Eagles' choice. I'm saying I think yeah. he's by because of he he wants to to say goodbye. I, is my that's just where I sit. You could ask me in two days, and I could have a different opinion. I admit I am I'm all over the place on this thing. Same here. Or okay. before though, I was very steadfast that he was coming back. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let, let's the, go to the, the more we get away from it. The more we get away from it, I'm getting more yeah. and more skeptical. He comes back. Me too. Me too. All right. Let's go Fletcher. I know I'm jumping offense and defense, but I'm just kind of doing this to perfect, a degree in a level of importance. Fletcher made 10 last year. Mm -hmm. Fletcher had a good year. Um, I he know did. everything on the defensive side was disappointing, but he, to me, he had a very solid year for the Eagles. I'm, if I can get him back, at the same number, I'm more than happy to bring Fletcher Cox back at that number. So I, I'm going to go back, but I think he's going to want more, which means buy. How do you fall on it? Um, I would love to have Fletcher Cox back in a rotational capacity. I don't want Fletcher Cox being our starter, not because he can't do it, yeah, but because I think it's time Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter up the ante, especially mm -hmm. Jordan Davis. Jalen Carter was a rookie last year. Mm-hmm. My expectations for him were very different than Jordan Davis. But I mainly speak about this because of the Jordan Davis factor. Mm -hmm. It's about time Jordan Davis steps up and show why he was drafted where he was drafted. Yeah, You have too much size, too much talent, too much athleticism for him to be 
as much of a liability on the back nine of a season. Right. It, 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 it's unacceptable, quite frankly, when you're that young and you have a guy who's 33 years old with a deeper motor, with a deeper bag. One of the most troubling things of the defense last year. Yeah. Arguably, maybe one of the most pivotal because yep. Jordan Davis is so instrumental to their run defense. If he's not on, it puts a lot of pressure on the edge rushers and other guys as well. Jordan Davis, if he was playing at the level he was supposed to be playing at, he would be their best run defender on the line. He he's the linchpin for their run defense. If he's not doing his job at his size, he becomes a liability for everybody else around him, and everybody else has to overcompensate. Yeah. And now you and and also because the Eagles haven't shown a propensity to invest in a linebacker position, your defensive line grows that much more important in the run game. Mm-hmm. So I, so I think Fletcher at ten million, if he wants to come back. In the capacity that I want him back, I might have to drop that to maybe seven or eight because, again, I want him in a rotational basis. I don't want him being my starter. That's going to be tough, though, Tone. You see what some of these interior guys are making now. I mean, they're making crazy money. They really are, you're, man. You're, they're you're in the right. 20s. You're right. But I also look at it like this. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the money the Philadelphia Eagles are spending on defense in 2024. Right. And in terms of cap dollars – the Philadelphia Eagles spending ranks top 10 in the NFL. It actually ranks seventh in the NFL. On that what side te- of the ball? On the, on the defensive side of the ball. They're, in, terms of cap, in terms of cap dollars, they're spending $115.99 million huh. on defense, which is ranked seventh in the NFL. And they're arguably getting the least amount of production out of those top 10 teams spending that amount of money on defense. It's unacceptable. So good point. Um, someone's going to have to really twist my arm and really convince me of what their value is. Uh, if we're going to make it make sense, because I'm not going to continue to spend the amount of money I'm spending on that side of the ball, especially if I'm not if I'm not getting the production out of certain players. And I think that's where the, where the Philadelphia Eagles need to find a way of balancing the books. We talked about this off air. The fact that the matter is you're spending too much money on the defensive side to not be getting any production out of it, which that's makes me feel as though maybe there's a misallocation of resources somewhere on that side of the ball. Maybe you're paying the wrong people. Maybe you're overpaying some guys. Wow. Maybe you have some bad contracts in a DB wow. room. Yeah, <laughs> look at the corners, man. <laughs> That's where you start. But I agree. Right, so let let's just say for our our purposes here, you you're by. I'm back on on Fletcher. I, I'm going to do BG here real quick. So BG made five million last year. My guess is, I I feel like Tone, and I don't think this is the right move for the club. Feel like they're going to bring him back at a league minimum. They're going to allow him to play the fifteenth year. It's a it's a sentimental thing. Doing sentimental things are dangerous, in my opinion, especially with a salary cap. But it's just sort of with the way my gut is telling me we're going to go. Uh, they're mm. going to go here with this. What do, you, what do you think about Graham? You bring up a good point. I think logically they know they shouldn't bring him back. But I think this situation trumps logic. And whether what, whether what I think they should do, what I think they're actually going to do is bring him back, like you said, a, a league minimum. In a rotational basis, he's going to probably stick around 20 to 25 percent of the snaps on defense, and he's going to walk into the sunset. Hmm. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. So, I, I, well, all right. So, I'm going to go back. You're going to go back. He's going, right? yeah, and, that, and that's against my will. Same, and I love the guy, but it's just yeah, and it's, it's, it's nothing against him. BG yeah. has given the Eagles great moments, Super Bowl championship. I mean. This is nothing has nothing to do with his contributions. This is about where he is currently in his career and also what the Philadelphia Eagles needs are. They need that roster spot. But I just have this inkling that they're going to bring him back in some capacity on that defensive side of the ball, be it better or minimum. Um I just have a hard time thinking they're going to just toss him. Yeah. All right. Let, let, let's go DeAndre Swift. He made 2.1 last year. Mm-hmm. This is the first time that he's come up as a free agent. We mm-hmm. know how this position is you know, is under, uh, valued. Um, but if, if he's ever going to get that deal, it's going to be now. The question is, will the Eagles do the Eagles value what he brought to the table Went over a thousand yards made a pro bowl is a guy who can catch the ball when he has it thrown to him out of the backfield. He stayed relatively healthy this year, which has been an issue for him in Detroit or was an issue in Detroit. So back or by tone on, uh, Swift. His situation might be the most 
interesting because of the nature of the running back market right now, the nature of the position, how it's seen in the NFL, and also with um, the running back draft class and how teams feel like they can easily replace production at the running back position. Because of that, and because he's not one of those top tier guys that's what that's on the market, like a Derrick Henry or Josh Jacobs, uh, Josh Jacobs, or you know, I don't really think he's even on the level of Austin Eckler. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. But when I think about it from that perspective, the running back market is oversaturated. There's a lot of guys on there's, there's a lot of guys out here that could potentially get money, and I just don't know if and I, I just don't know if the bag is going to be out there. Maybe the back he's looking for now. Granted, he had a had a career year, a Pro Bowl season, over a thousand yards, stayed completely healthy the whole year. I don't know. I don't know if the market still is going to be friendly to him because of the nature of the position. There's so many names out there. Teams are going. Teams can easily draft the guy and replace the production. He may have to settle for a contract that's that's less than his that's less than his estimated market value. As of right now, the market has him at a, at six point seven million average annual salary. Um, you know, a four-year deal, twenty-seven point one million. I don't know who's going to give him that love, that much security in terms of the length of the contract. I think a realistic move is maybe DeAndre Swift at four point five million, because of the nature of the position and because of the market. I, and in saying that, I think he has about a sixty percent chance of coming back to Philadelphia. So I think I'm leaning on the side of back because of the nature of the market and the draft coming up and the position. Not more, not really because of the fact that, you know, he's going to be able to outprice himself. I just think he's going to, he's going to, he's, he's going to be beholden to the market and it's yeah. going to lower his market value. I couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, there, he, he is unfortunately hitting it at the wrong time. He's mm -hmm. hitting it with a lot of big names out there, guys who were, you know, frankly, more accomplished than he is, who are going to get more money. And even they're not going to get a lot of money because right. of the position. Um, Think about Miles Sanders. Last year, he hit the market at the perfect time for him oh, personally. There was no he was smart. His agent did it quick. He didn't quick. play around. There was no, there was no running backs on the open market. Now there could have been, like Saquon and Josh Jacobs, but they mm -hmm. franchise tagged him, and that threw the monkey wrench, and that made it much. That made Miles Sanders that much of a commodity. Also coming off of that season, making it to a Super Bowl, and he fleeced the Panthers. Let's call it what it is. Yeah, and was terrible. They got, no, they got nothing out of him. He's hurt all year, non-productive. Yeah, I, I think he comes back at four. I think they have him back at four million a year, and I think it's a good deal for everybody. He'll get four, 12, 12 million for three years or whatever. They'll give him some nice little little signing bonus. Uh, it'll be the kind of contract that that he's you know he'll get that, and then maybe get one more, and that'll be it. But I, I think that works for him. I now know. here's what now here's what I will say to that. Right in twenty twenty three, in ter in terms of cap dollars, the Philadelphia Eagles spent five point two four million for. Four individual running backs. Five point two four million. That yeah, was that includes Boston Scott. That's Boston and, Scott, Kenny Gainwell, Gainwell, DeAndre Swift, and I also believe that was Rashad Penny on the roster as well. Right now, based off of that number, do you see the Philadelphia Eagles committing four four point five million to DeAndre Swift because they spent that much on just four guys? Here's what I think happens. I think they let Boston Scott walk. Boston was making two million. Boston Scott was making a little bit less than DeAndre Swift. That's crazy for, for wow. what he gave you versus what DeAndre gave you. Right. I, I think Scott walks. I think they draft a guy in the third or fourth round that's going to cost you not much, less than mm -hmm. a million. And I think they hold on to Kenneth Gainwell. So I think you're looking at DeAndre Swift, Kenneth Gainwell, and then whoever they draft, and that's your three. And, you, and you're still super cheap. Yeah, and you still and you have this other guy on the roster named Lou Nichols the third. Um, he's twenty three, very young guy. Um, only has eight hundred thousand against the cap, seven hundred ninety five thousand to be exact. Uh, Kenneth Gainwell only one point one million against the cap. As of right now, the Philadelphia Eagles are paying one point nine million dollars towards the cap for the running back position. Will they draft the guy? You're very. I, I think that's very likely. Uh, what you know? Do you see them bringing back? DeAndre Swift, I think it's possible as well. I think I think their goal really, they want to keep that running back position if they can. I think they want to keep it under six point five, under seven million as a whole group. Totally, I agree. I agree. So, the, all right, that's good. That's a great segue into this. I'm not counting to Kobe Dean here because he didn't finish the year. So you basically finished the year with your linebackers at Zach Cunningham, Nicholas Morrow, and Shaq Leonard were your three guys. Combined those three, you paid them four point three million. 
Mm. So that was 1.7 for Cunningham, 1.1 for Mora, 1.5 for Leonard. Um, I think one of those three is back. I think Zach Cunningham, how he went out of his way to praise him in the press conference. I think Zach is back. I think Nick goes, and I, I people were, were saying in, in even in the locker room uh, at the end of the season, Shaq Leonard was basically like, dude, my back's killing me. Like, so I, I don't think he would have been back anyway, but I think those, I think one of the three comes back with Nicobe Dean and with someone else. They're either going to trade, draft, or sign a free agent. It's going to be some kind of priority tone. I'm not, when I say draft, I don't mean first round, but relatively high pick or money spent to some degree or something. I, I am, I'm going to go of the belief of the, I'll have the faith that they know. They can't just run this back with Zach Cunningham and Nicobe Dean. Mm. You can't do that. So I think someone else is added to the mix. So to answer it, I think one of those three comes back, and I think it's Zach Cunningham. How about you? I would agree. I think I think Zach Cunningham does come back. Uh, going into the 2024 season, um, when it comes to money spent on linebacker, uh, the Eagles, and this is this is excluding Hassan Reddick and Nolan Smith. And this is the part of the, about the, the numbers that kind of gets annoying for me. Yeah, because they're edge guys. They're, they're edge guys. Those guys are not I don't true linebackers. Linebacker. Yeah, I yeah. don't either. So I'm I'm removing their money off of the books when it comes to the linebacker position in terms of allocation of resources. Um, between Nicobe Dean, Terrell Lewis, Brandon Smith, Ben Van Sumeren, and they did bring in Julian uh, Acora, but the numbers are still the, the numbers are, have yet to properly for him. But yeah. I, but if you remove Hassan Reddick and Nolan Smith. The Philadelphia Eagles are spending only $4.3 million on linebackers in 2024. $4.3 million for about five guys. Five guys. That's an average. That's an average of $860,000 per player. Yeah. You cannot be that cheap at that no. position. You, you can prioritize the trenches and corners and edges and all. That's fine. You can't skimp on this the way that they have and you it, saw it you it's a direct result of what you did last year yeah the way that you it's criminal how how little they put into that linebacker room it's criminal they should yeah. be ashamed of themselves quite frankly yeah I'm, it, it's quite honestly disgusting it, how it, little they invested in that position and expected the most out of it and they thought that we would just be okay with zach cunningham and nicholas morrow and nicole dean i actually think it's a slap in the face to the fan base quite frankly to allocate that little amount of resources to the linebacker position you're that cocky. You're that. Uh, you're that. You're that cheeky to believe that. Oh, yeah, we can just put put anybody there. That position doesn't matter. Are you out of your damn mind? This is really though where we're going to see tone. How much last year was a wake up call, or how much they think last year was just an anomaly and and, and stuff went sideways because they had bad assistant coaches. That I'm serious, man. Like that that position itself specifically is going to speak to how much they think they exactly. need to change. Exactly. Like, yeah. if, if there's one position I'm paying attention to, like you said, to see how they spend money, is linebacker. Yep. That's going to tell me everything I need to know about where their mindset is going to the season. Yeah, if they, I'm if, hoping... if, if they go cheap again, and we start this season with Nicole Dean and Zach Cunningham as starting linebackers, why, why, why should we show up as fans? Quite honestly, why should I'm we show up? I'm hoping against hope that they that both Nicole Dean – and Zach Cunningham have to earn it next year, and it's not just given to. If you were watching that Super Bowl, you saw high quality linebacker play. You saw the value of a linebacker when Dre Greenlaw went down. Travis Kelsey was on a mission. Yeah, Dre Dre, Gloom, Dre Greenlaw was making life hard for Kelsey in that first mm -hmm. half. The moment he went down, you saw Kelsey getting off. You yep. saw the you saw you saw you saw the type of play the uh, the Chiefs linebackers were you know were putting up. George Kittle non factor in that game. Yep, non factor. Their safeties and those linebackers did a hell of a job defending. Um, George Kittle, hell of a job, yeah. right? So again, if they go into this off season and we go and we end up going into training camp with the linebacker position, and they, and again, right now, only four point three million dollars has been allocated to the linebacker position. That's between the that's between the Kobe Dean and four other linebackers, and I'm not including Hassan Reddick and Nolan Smith because right. they're edge rushers. They're not in this category. But when it comes to pure linebackers, guys that you want dropping back, guys that you want filling the gaps and run defense, so on and so forth, they're only spending an average of eight hundred and sixty grand per player. Mm. That's a grand total of only four point three, or a little over four million dollars. 
Yeah, it's between it's, five, it's, between it's five unacceptable, players. Man. It's just Unac unacceptable. It's unacceptable. I can't yeah. think of a team, any other team in football, that's disrespected the linebacker position the way the Eagles have. Agreed. Agreed. All right, uh, Marcus Mariota. He made five last year. We know they like Tanner McKee. Tanner McKee had a good camp. Mm -hmm. uh, appears to have a lot of the measurables. He's got size. Uh, you know, he can make a lot of throws. The arms there. Uh, is this a deal where they just elevate him, or do you think they're, uh, you know, they're not they're not quite in full belief that he's the guy in, in case Hurts goes down? What do you think happens with Mariota? Uh, I think Mariota is gone. I think the Philadelphia Eagles should consider bringing in um, a legitimate veteran at backup. I like Tanner McKee, but I want someone next to Jalen Hurts that can kind of give him um, another eye, another perspective, a guy who's actually seen it all or seen mm -hmm. or seen enough, maybe seen more than Jalen Hurts, put it that way. Mm -hmm. And Tanner McKee is a young guy. I do I, I do like him, but what can he what can he bring to the table? What can he what can he offer Jalen Hurts? He's you not know, offering Hurts anything. Right, no. right. He has to develop himself. He, that's exactly. He's the backup do. the backup quarterback position is more than just a hey, stepping in when a guy gets hurt. I think the backup quarterback jobs also is to stabilize the starter quarterback. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the starters, so sometimes your starter may not see everything. And your backup say, Hey, listen, man, you got this. You're actually making the right reads, but you're making it a little too late. Get it out your hand faster. I see it. You got it. You know, there's a, there was this moment in that Seattle game, I think, um, years ago when Carson Wentz went down. You saw, I think throughout that season, you saw Josh McCown communicating with Jalen Hurts. All, I mean, not Jalen Hurts, Carson Wentz all year. Yeah. You saw Josh McCown really being hands-on. You saw that that coach in him. Mm -hmm. And um, in that playoff game, he was coaching up Wentz, and then obviously Wentz went down, and then he came in, and he was just – he, he, well, it, he got it, hurt too. He, he tore yeah. his the, the tore his hamstring off, right? Bone. Yeah, yeah it was it, it was a valiant effort. But I guess my point is, you want a guy like that in the building that's going to stabilize you, that's going to bring you back down to earth. Your coach, your coaches are going to do their job, but your backup is going to give you that, you know, that that voice saying, "Hey, listen, you're doing all right. Just just keep hammering at it." Or, "Hey, listen, just, you know, just pull back, trust your O line a little bit more mm -hmm. because they're blocking well." You know, it's, it's that it's that mature voice in the building. I think Jalen Hurts needs that. Yeah, I, it's an interesting point. You, you know, and I I wasn't thinking in terms of like the guy to, to provide him counsel and all that kind of stuff, but it is an interesting point. Um, it just feels like Mariota is not going to be here. I, I would definitely go on the buy territory. Yeah. Uh, Mar Mar Mariota needs counseling himself. He doesn't even know if he wants to play football anymore. Yeah. Uh, all right. We already talked about Boston Scott, and I like the fact that he can return kicks, but that has become such a non-entity how many do you return a year now seven eight I, not even i don't even know so he's probably gone boston scott yeah i think i think boston is gone as well uh right. it was a fun run but they showed me last year that they didn't care anything about what he could provide so i think i think boston is as good as gone uh now is the these a couple of these are interesting so opetta um the guard made 1.4 last year. Jack Driscoll, also a guard, made 947350 last year. Mm -hmm. I, I think both are valuable, but if you ask me, especially Driscoll, he is definitely going to get more than that on the open market if if he so chooses to. You know, the Eagles aren't inclined to bringing him back. I, I think I think they both might be gone. I think Opet is more likely back, but I think Driscoll's gone. Yeah, I'm I may have to agree with you on that. Driscoll has an opportunity to really get some good money this offseason. He's put up a lot of quality reps for the Philadelphia Eagles. He made some money for himself, um, especially when Lane Johnson went down. I believe he couldn't start. What game was that? Was it the Buffalo game he couldn't start? Yes. yes. Uh, Driscoll came in, struggled the first series, but then settled in. And uh, Driscoll has always given you quality reps. Um, is he a, is he perfect? Is he the one of the best? No, but. He's going to get paid because offensive linemen are valuable and you're even more valuable when you can play more than one position. And I definitely think Driscoll might get an opportunity to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And also you're coming from that Philadelphia Eagles program with Jeff Stoutland. Stoutland, you. It's, 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 a, it's a couple guys that have gotten paid because they were a part of sure. Stoutland University. Um, mm -hmm. Isaac Sayamalu, um, Andre Dillard. So, yeah, I think Driscoll, because of everything he's been able to do for the Eagles, that that makes him that much more valuable on the market, and I don't think the Philadelphia Eagles are going to pay him. Besides, you know they got they got a lot of bodies on the roster as of right now. I'm and I'm, and I know they're not afraid to draft O'Lyman. I can see them drafting. I can see them leaving this draft with two O'Lyman. 
Oh, definitely. And that's going to happen. If Eagles fans don't think they're going to take offensive line, they are because they're going to need to replace some of these guys. And at some point, someone's going to have to step in there for Lane Johnson. So yeah. You, yeah. yeah. Outside of the starters, as of right now, the Philadelphia Eagles, they, 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 their O linemen are Tyler Steen, LaRaven Clark, Brett Toth, who they like, uh, Fred Johnson, Letitia Smith, Jason Poey, Cam, uh, you know, Cam Jurgens. You know, he, he starts at right guard, but yeah. if he, if, you know, he's if, the center. If, if, if Kelsey leaves, he he'll be the starting center. So I can definitely see them leaving his draft with at least two offensive linemen and letting Sue Opeta and Jed just go walk again. The both of those guys have put up some quality reps, and they may make some money this offseason and may price themselves out of Philadelphia. Okay, uh, let's go receiver, and I'm just going to focus on two here. Uh, Alameda Zacchaeus made 1.2 last year. Quez Watkins 866, uh, 166. Bye, both. By both, yeah. Um, and and I like the media, but I just don't think they're gonna bring him back. It's just that simple. You, you can you can upgrade from them. You, you yeah, can you, you should yeah, be able to upgrade from both of those cats. Yeah, definitely. I agree. And Quez, I mean, if it, it, it look because of that speed, he's probably going to find another job somewhere. Yeah. But I don't know if I I don't think it's a Philadelphia. I think I think that's run his course. Yep. All right. Let's go. Jack Stoll, eight hundred. Money's not a big deal. Eight hundred fifteen thousand. It's it, you, isn't he restricted? Yeah, he is. I mean, you, you'd bring him back. At, you have the choice. Yeah, you you control him a little bit more, but he would. You're not looking at a big raise there for this guy. You're looking at you know whatever, the, basically the same salary. Or, or yeah, or you, you can kind of you can you can kind of tell him what you're paying him. He's like, okay, yeah, <laughs> you know, he's he, no that's, no that's no that's disrespect. disrespect. He's happy to have a job. So yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's no disrespect, but that's just that's just the nature of his situation. He hasn't put up any anything. Um, he hasn't put up enough tape. In my opinion, maybe in blocking schemes, but he hasn't put up enough tape to really demand or have his pick of the litter when it's when, in terms right. of you know jobs in the NFL. I think the Eagles are going to say, "Hey, we want to bring you back. This is what we want to give you," and he's going to say, "Thank you." Cool, cool, cool. I'm good. Yep. Uh, all right. Last one. I just we're running up against it here. Yes. Sean Bradley. Um, he showed himself to be a very good special teamer. Right. Man, he's been hurt a lot lately. Um, he was making eight hundred and sixty six six oh five. You know, availability can, is the greatest ability. He might be in some trouble here just because he hasn't been able to stay on the field. Because of because of the fact that he is going to be very cheap, I wouldn't be surprised if his agent says, look, you know, can we get him on? You know, you know can you guys bring him back? Maybe he fights for a spot. I wouldn't be surprised if, um, you know, his team, his agent, uh, you know, finds a way to uh, finagle something with the Eagles and he has an opportunity to at least – um, fight for a special team roster spot because again you don't want to you don't just want to gut your roster you still want to have some bodies on there that you can use in special teams and you know practice squad bodies as well okay all right all right let's uh let's take a time out we're actually going to look at some of the strengths i know we've done a lot since the season ended of what the issues are but we're going to look at some of the strengths and things you can kind of build off of mm -hmm. and and how it relates to the the 2024 season and, and and tying into what they may go after so we'll do all of that continue with the birds talk uh, when we get back, when we in the NFL segment, Tone, at 1 o'clock, uh, we're going to dig into all the big-time free agents who, who could maybe help the Eagles at positions of need. All right, let's talk about Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group because knowing who to trust with your finances can be a real challenge, right? And I can tell you that from personal experience. It took me a long time to find the right people, and I did with Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group, whether it's retirement planning, 401k review, insurance review, you might have a small business and you're trying to get your employee benefits off the ground. That's something that Jim can help you with. He's also great with answering any kind of questions that you have. Um, you don't, you, you get, sometimes there are things that you're not that familiar with if you're not a financial expert. And he's really good at not only being available, but also explaining it to you in layman's terms. I've entrusted my IRA, my 401k rollover with Jim, and I couldn't be any happier. You will be as well. Give him a call. 610-996-4751. 610 610- 9964751. You can also email him as well. Murray, M U R R A Y dot Jim at principal.com. That's Murray dot Jim at principal.com.
any professional sports coach will tell you, there's no substitution for preparation. At Malamut & Associates, that is a tenet by which we live. We prepare from day one for victory. Anything less is not acceptable. Go passionately. Go fearlessly. Go confidently. Go birds! <clears throat> Go confidently towards your goals with First Trust, Philly's hometown bank for nearly 90 years, and the official bank of the Philadelphia Eagles. We're focused on getting you over the goal line. So go with conviction. Go with trust. Go Bird! And go forward with us by your side. First Trust Bank, the official bank of Philadelphia dreams. Oh, and go Birds. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their fantasy pick em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday, watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game, and the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. back we are sports take let's hit the like button if we could friends appreciate it tony shields rob ellis hanging with you on this tuesday all right so uh tone i know it ended horrifically i know we all still bear the scars i know how bad it was but let, let's point out a couple things at least you can build on going into next season all right, right. for starters they've won 34 games the last three years they won nine after winning four the previous season they won 14 i'm just talking about regular season then they won 11. I mean, it's not easy to do that in that league, okay? So l- let's start there. Uh, they have been a winning club for whatever reason, um, and not, not, not necessarily even for whatever reason, for a lot of reasons. It went really bad, really fast, in, in, in a way that things absolutely have to change, as we've talked about, but still. There's a pretty good foundation of winning here, which if you can get it back early next season – I think can get you back into that mindset and that mode of, okay, this is really who we are. Whatever happened for the last, I don't know, two months last year, it's not necessarily who we are. You're right. Uh, they have found, they have, they have had an ability to make the playoffs the past three seasons, right? Coming off, of, coming off of a four 11 and one season where things were very bleak for the Philadelphia Eagles, they found a way to always be in the mix over the past three years. Obviously, they were a serious contender one of those years, but still made the playoffs uh, nonetheless. Uh, and I think you know, you know, you know that that brings me to you know one of their strengths, and one of their strengths, I believe, I will start at the quarterback position because at the end of the day, you know, people can have whatever opinions they have about Jalen Hurts. He's proven that at bare minimum, he's a playoff quarterback. He's going to get you into the playoffs. Now, he's also showing you, as far as the ceiling goes, he can he can get you to a Super Bowl. You can nitpick the circumstances of how they got there all you want. He showed you he can get there. Mm-hmm. So when I think about it from that perspective, at this point in his career, okay, I like that. Now it's about up in the ante. Yeah, three straight years, we, we, we made it to the playoffs. One year, actually two of the three years, you were a wild card exit. The one year you made it to a Super Bowl. I think now we need – now the expectation from Jalen Hurts is now you need to start uh, up in the ante. No more wild card exits. As a matter of fact, I don't really like being a wild card team at all. But, again, that means you're the number one team in your conference. That's hard to do. This Philadelphia Eagles team, they started off strong. They fell off a cliff. If I had to ask myself, 
what are they what are they more closer to that 10 and one team or that one and six team? I would probably lean more towards the one and six team because of the mm-hmm. because of the deficiencies, because of the players they're losing, um, because of the, because of their money situation. Right. So overall, I think from a strength standpoint, I'm comfortable with the quarterback position and uh, I'm really excited to see what's the next stage in his development or the next stage in his evolution, because I think there's a lot of pressure riding on him coming into this season. We spoke about this mm-hmm. and then I'll, and I'll end it here. If Jalen Hurts comes back sharp, sharper than we've ever seen him, if he comes back, you know, clean cut and making good decisions, being back to being a strong decision maker, I think this Philadelphia Eagles team, it's going to make their transition going forward that much more smoother and we'll have more confidence in this team because if you have confidence in a quarterback, then you think you can, then at that point, most people, you think you can beat anybody. Sure. Look, this, this guy scored 38 touchdowns last year. Right. The things that weren't good. The turnovers weren't good. Uh, right. You know, there were other things that he needs to improve on, but he, he has a nose for the end zone. Uh, and I don't care if you throw it or you run it T- to get in 38 times is a pretty significant number. And to be able to still throw for 30, you know, 3,800 yards and run for whatever he ran for 600 yards, despite having the down year, which, which is real. I mean, I'm not discounting it. It's it. There's yeah. a lot. That you 19 can turnovers, 19 turnovers. And it's funny, really quick. Sorry to interrupt you, Rob, but real yeah. quick. His touchdown to turnover ratio in 2023 was two to one. He, I feel comfortable with my quarterback's touchdown to turnover ratio being three to one. Yeah, it can't be that's what, he, that's what he has to, that's what he has to get back to the three yeah. to one ratio. Because in 2022, his ratio was not two to one. It was much better than that. He only no. had six turnovers. He only had six turnovers and he had four to one. 35 touchdowns. So um when you do six that, to man, one. six to one almost. Wow, you I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, that's yeah. that's wild. Yeah, yeah, that's really yeah, yeah. That's almost that's almost a six to one turnover ratio. That's yeah. insane. And that's what made him the MVP candidate. That that six to one, that five to one touchdown to turnover ratio, and then he dropped significantly to a two to one ratio. That right. can't, Agreed. that can that cannot happen again. And I don't think it will. But I'm even going to reiterate it: it can't happen again yeah. because now we're going to start looking at him as the guy that maybe this this contract was a, was a bad decision. Well, th- then the conversation yeah. becomes he might not be the guy. He, he turns it over 19 times next year. Trust me, that's where right. the conversation's going. And that's me being objective. And I'm a, and I'm a Jalen Hurts guy. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right, so the, the other thing is, um, you know, we sort of just say this and we move right on, but you have 2,000-yard receivers. You had one who almost had 1,500 yards mm-hmm. in A.J. Brown. And you have one who's just getting better and better and better, who was over a thousand yards last year in Devontae Smith. Both had seven touchdowns. Uh, De- to Devontae Smith's credit, when they were really shorthanded on the in that playoff game, he was one of about five guys who showed up uh, mm-hmm. in the game. He played great. Uh, so you have two really, really good receivers, like A guys. Now, Dallas Goddard's interesting. 14 games, 592 yards. Now, if you say, you know, 14 games, 592 is good. Problem is, Tone, he can't stay on the field. And they and their problem to a degree is they don't, I don't think, know how to use him either. But he is an interesting case study, Dallas Goddard. Yeah, agree. You know, you and I were talking about this uh, offline here. And, you know, he's giving you, 26, 26 games out of a possible 34 games over the past two seasons. In 2022, he missed 12 games. In 2023, um, he missed three games. And he was lucky to only miss that many because the bye week came at a perfect time. Right. So, from my perspective, it's put up a shuttle time for Dallas Goddard. Mm-hmm. He's in the second to last year of his deal. Now, his deal is very cap-friendly in terms of the base numbers, the base salary, and also – um the cap hit, especially going into the 2025 season. But I think the Philadelphia Eagles should consider um, what their options are beyond Dallas Goddard. Again, is his talent undeniable? Absolutely. Um, when, you know, when he's healthy and when he's when he has the ball, is he a wrecking ball? Absolutely. You know, is, he, does, does he make the Philadelphia Eagles offense that much more dynamic when he's touching the rock? Absolutely. But when you think about the production you've gotten from him over the past two seasons, you say to yourself, Wow, what could have been? Right. Hmm. He's he he's always dealt with nagging injuries throughout throughout his career. And when when his when his current contract ends, um, 
he'll be entering the 2026 offseason at the age of 31. Mm. I think the Philadelphia Eagles need to start thinking about life beyond Dallas Goddard because I have a hard time believing they give him another contract at the rate he gets hurt. I think so, too. I, and I, this is where I think you really have to invest in some way, shape, or form. Invest means either the draft, free agency, or trade in a, mm-hmm. in a good backup tight end because you can't trust him to stay on the field. And you also need to start developing somebody. So, and, and Stoll and Calcaterra and those guys, they're, they're not it. So they have to get somebody in here, not a priority, not, it doesn't rank with, you know, with the linebackers and corner and all the other stuff that they need. But you got to start looking at that uh, long and hard. But mm-hmm. Look, I'll, I'll say this as well. With you know the contract coming up as well for him the following season, and um, I think I won't be surprised if the Philadelphia Eagles draft the tight end. Yeah, right. He plays behind Goddard, and the following off season, they you know they're where their options. You know what you know is it is it better to keep him? Is it cheaper to keep him? I agree. Or cheaper to or, or cheaper to cut him? Mm-hmm. Or trade them, or what, or, or whatever may have you. I think they're going to have to they're going to have to consider that um, next off season. I wouldn't be surprised if they phase in the new tight end they draft from this off season into their you know to be their starter um, for the following season. Remember, they did the exact same thing as Zach Ertz. Yeah, the exact same it's thing. True. And I, and I and I wouldn't be surprised if the Philadelphia Eagles do the exact same thing um, to Dallas Goddard. Yeah. And by the way, Goddard's not nearly as accomplished as Ertz was. Not so, nearly. Not nearly. Um, and nowhere okay. near as available. No, correct. Yep. Uh, all right. So as a team, they rushed for over 2,100 yards. You still have, you know, whatever running back ends up being here, I, I would think would be a 1,000-yard threat behind this offensive line. And you know Hertz is going to get you in that five 600 range. So this is a team that if they choose to, should be able to run the ball successfully. So you have the ability with 2,000-yard receivers, a, a rushing game that got you over 2,000 yards last year, a, a, a quarterback who threw for over 3,800 yards. And no matter what happens with Kelsey, I, I don't know that you'd still rank him as the best offensive line in football, but you still have a good offensive line. You still have Lane Johnson. You still have Landon Dickerson. You still have Jordan Maialata. You're still going to have some form of Cam Jurgens. This is still a, a good old line. So, I, I, you know, I keep – emphasizing this, but the offense with the right people in charge is going to be good again. Like I, I am, I don't worry about the offense that much. I'm, I'm a little concerned about Hertz, but I feel like the offense is going to get back to where it needs to be. You know, what's funny. We had this exact same sentiment from last off season. Yeah. I'm not worried about the offense, you know? And I understand why we why, why we say that, right? You think about the talent at the receiver position, the tight end position. You think about the quarterback. You think about who you have at O line. Still, some relatively unknowns with the Kelsey situation, obviously. But you know, last year we had this level of confidence with the offense, and we got what we got on the back on on the back end. Mm-hmm. I think as confident as we are in the offense, we still have to hold them accountable and say, "Look, the pressure's on you as well. Yeah, you you have to come and deliver." You know, this is good. This is good. The Eagles are going to be built like this. Their offense is going to be more talented than their defense. That I, I think that's how they want to be built. Mm-hmm. I think I, th- I think they want to go all in on offense and have a serviceable defense. I think that's their ultimate goal. Yeah. The different the problem with last year was your offense only carried you to a point and then they fell off a cliff and then your defense fell off a cliff. Offense and defense fell off a cliff at the exact same time. Right. We we thought defense was going to get it together, but but little did we know they shot their load and they were who they were. Yeah. And they got worse from that point. So as talented as this offense is, we talk about it all the time. In football, you can have all the talent in the world. Does it fit? Is there chemistry? You know, does the coaches and does the coaches know what to do with these, you know, with these tools? Um, are the players executing at a high level? All those things have to, you know, you know, ha- ha- have to go into it. So I'm not ready to just crown the offense quite yet. And I'm not saying and I'm and I'm I'm not saying that's what you're doing, mm-hmm. but I'm not ready to just say, oh, I'm not worried about them. They yeah. showed me nothing in the back nine of the season. They were inept. They were hamstrung. They were castrated in this in the second half of the season. And they have to prove that they can respond to what the NFL threw at them in 2023. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the difference is I believe the foundation's there for the offense where I don't mm-hmm. think there's a foundation there for the defense. Yes, I agree with that. The personnel is definitely there on the, on, on the offensive side. Yeah. Yes. But everything you say is true. I mean, but they, they have got to – they got to figure out the way to hone this thing. And, and a lot of this is just Jalen, but they got to figure out a way to hone this thing 
and get it back to, to humming at 2022. I, I think the other thing you just mentioned is right. You can't realistically expect if you're the Eagles to go from <laughs> like a bottom dweller defensively to, to top five. If you're smart about it, you'll make sure the offense is fixed and you make sure you have building blocks for the defense where they get to be decent this year and maybe start to get into the good category, you know, 25, 26. Right. Absolutely. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. That's the goal. Um, get your offense back on track, get them confident again, um, get someone that knows what they're doing. Um, hopefully Kellen Moore is that guy. And then on defense, um, try to, you know, try to re reinvigorate that, you know, that, that defensive side with some personnel. Um, you were the worst, you were one of the worst pass defenses in the league. One of the worst defenses in the league down the stretch. You got to find a way to get yourself to be at least middle of the pack, or at least rank 16th or 15th or 14th um, in the NFL in terms of total defense. You, you, you got to get, you got to become that at least. Agreed. All right, let's go. Um, I, look, another one is, and we don't know what his status is going to be. We don't know if he's going to be back or not. But Hassan Reddick had 11 sacks this year. He had 16 sacks the previous season. Uh, you have, in, in theory, with Reddick and Sweat. Two guys on the edge who should be double-digit sack guys for you. You should have, in theory, Jalen Carter, someone who takes that that first year to second year leap. Uh, I, I'm not going to go there on Jordan Davis and the because I, I don't. They need to prove it to me. But at least with the defensive line, there's a couple of core pieces there that should be disruptive um, for you. The rest of it is a giant question mark. But you do have a couple of guys there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of pressure going into the season, especially on Josh Sweat entering a contract year. Noah Smith, will he step up? That's yeah. that's a huge deal. Yeah. Hassan Reddick, what does his future hold? Regardless, though, I think the person I'm going to be eyeing, the two people on the D line that I'm going to be glued to is Jordan Davis and Noah Smith. We need production from those guys. Yep. We need sustained production from those guys. If Nolan Smith comes into the 2024 season and is a non-factor. If Jordan Davis enters the 2024 season or at any point throughout the 2024 season becomes a liability, like Brian Baldy pointed out ever so eloquently, we're going to have some real issues beyond just 2024. I'm talking 2025, 2026, 2027 issues because those are draft picks that you invested now, obviously, you can always draft guys and maybe you find guys, whatever it may be, for agency. But you want to make sure you're hitting on your draft pick so you can spend your money the way you really want to instead of being hamstrung by a bad decision you made. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, we, we could sit there and say, oh, how he, how he blew it. but and, and that's all true. The bottom line is this team, ha those guys have to make plays for this team because you there's only so many guys you can draft, only so many guys you can sign, only so many guys you can trade for. If Nolan Smith and Jordan Davis aren't what we thought they were going to be as first-round picks. It's going to set this team back years. It just is, you know, and you hope that it, it, it's just one of those things where with Nolan Smith, it was a rookie year. He was behind a lot of good players and whatever. He, he just couldn't quite figure it out. Now he knows what he has to do. Mm -hmm. To me, if you look at the other, the, the other guys, like Jordan Davis has shown you at least for a little bit of the season, not enough that he can do it. Like it's just, it's about his, his, you know, where he is at in terms of a commitment. I don't know if Nolan Smith can play. I think Davis can, but it, now it's up to him. Yeah. You know, with Nolan, I don't question his desire to be great. I, you know, listening to the way he communicates and the way he carries himself, he's a hard worker, but I think he needs more refinement. Yes. Whereas though Jordan Davis, you see all the tools. We've seen it, but we ask ourselves, where's the commitment? Right. You know, he talks a good game. We, you know, in his interviews, he's a, he, he, he's, he's a good interview. Yep. He strikes you as a guy that knows his flaws and is very vulnerable and transparent. He strikes you as that kind of guy. But on the field, who are you when the cameras aren't around, right? What are your habits like when, you know, when you're home? Things like that. That's what I worry about with Jordan Davis. You know, when you're a guy that big, it's probably a struggle to keep weight off. So – it's going to be imperative for Jordan Davis to come back like Jalen Hurts better than ever. He this this is an important year for him because it's going to determine whether or not the Philadelphia Eagles pick up that fifth year option. He's entering year three. You're you're, you're not a rookie anymore. You're a young veteran. It's time for you to act like you've been here before and you know what's expected of you. Yeah, I agree with you, and that's the thing. Like some people may chalk it up to, oh, he's young, and he. I'm talking about Jordan. Just doesn't get it. 
excuse my language, Rob. Fuck that. I know. So that's where I was going to go. Like, if you want to, you elected to go to the NFL and you want to be paid like a, you know, like a first round pick, that stuff is all nonsense. And the other part is, what are you going to tell me when you're 30? Then it's going to be, he's old. He can't keep himself in shape. No, this is your time. Right. It's the old Charles Barkley thing. Moses Malone said to him, dude, you're fat. Got plenty of ability, but you're not in shape. Unless you want to, you know, if you want to be great, get in shape. So if you want to be great, Jordan Davis, get in shape. That's it. That, big, that begs the question. And let me ask you this. How honest do you believe the organization has been with Jordan Davis? I think they know they have to be up blunt with him. I do. I really do, man. Like, I really believe Nick and Howie and maybe his D-line coach who's, who's, who's stepping in here have to say to him, we're, we're going to sit down and we're going to watch the first three games, you know, the best of your highlights from the first three games. I love what I see there. Let me show you the last three games. That's a different player. Jordan, why is that a different player? What are we seeing here? Well, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little tired, my conditioning. Okay. If that doesn't get fixed, you're going to be on the bench. You're not going to hit your numbers. And it's going to affect you when that contract comes up and that rookie contract. We need you. We need you as a team. But you, if you want to have a career here and make a lot of money, have got to get your act together. There's the, You're not going to keep missing weight and being allowed to dress. That's the other thing that I hope Nick Sirianni gets his act together with. Like, guess what? You don't make weight. Sit your ass down. You're not playing this week. I mean, that was part of what Ball, Howard Eskin reported that he missed weight like last six weeks. And Baldy's watching film and saying, I wouldn't even dress this guy. That You can't have a free ride this year. That stuff is part of the reason I think they had a downfall last year. Yeah. You know what's interesting? Now it's all starting to come, you know, it's just all starting to become very clear to me now. You know, the players are always saying, oh, yeah, we like Nick. We like Nick. We like Nick. Why do you like Nick? Why? Tell me why. Yeah. Because he does he does he let does he let you get by? Does he let you cut corners? Is it a substitute um, teacher vibe? Is is he giving is he trying is he always trying to be your friend? Is he is he the homie or is he the teacher? Which is, is he it? your boy or is he your parent? Like, exactly. What, what is which it? is it? Yeah. Which is it? Because you know, it's 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 people in my life that I come across, be it in school, high school, college, whatever, that I liked, but maybe they didn't bring the best out of me. You know what I mean? Yes. And that and, and that's and, and that's the and that's the question. And I think and I think that's why we are where we are with the way things have moved with the staff and, you know, just the dysfunction. They look at Nick as somebody who's likable. But can he get the best out of you? Yeah. Is he demanding? Well, all right. So if you think about it, you, you had, Fletcher Cox was highly pissed off that they were even questioning that he was leaving. Fletcher Cox is an older player who I'm sure Nick took, Nick took care of. Kelsey. But here's the thing. His, went, went, no, but real quick. Went yeah, to his, I'm sorry. Went to I'm his, sorry. The, no, but what, the, I'm, where I'm going with this is the older guys had his back because I think he has the older guys back. He doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, he's going to he's going to time manage them and load manage them and whatever, all that. Right. Stuff. And that's all well and good. I don't know that the core of this group, like the middle aged to younger guys, respect him enough. And, and that's a big problem. Like he, he's got the older guys. That's good. He need You need to have them. I think they ha he has them because of the way he takes care of them. This is where I think he's got to separate and, and come in with kind of a different demeanor. Not be totally different from who you are, but, but go ahead. I'm, no, no, you're fine. I, I just wanted to add on to what you were saying yeah. because, to your point, yeah, he has the older guys because maybe the, maybe he handles he handles them properly in terms of their conditioning and, and all that kind of stuff and the work he demands from them. But also at the same time, those guys had those habits before he got here. Yeah. Jordan um, um, Fletcher Cox. Brandon Graham, Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, you know, guys like that, they already had good habits. It's true. They were already 10 plus year veterans in the league. They were established here. veterans. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't like, sure, he probably came in and say, hey, we're not going to work the guys as hard. Sure, he probably said that, but he didn't have to teach them shit. We you know when I think about the other guys, right? What has he really instilled in the other guys? Yeah. Right. You know, this, the, coming, coming into this season, you know, we saw Nick Sirianni. More vocal than we've ever seen him because guy and we and we heard rumors of you know the attention to detail was lacking sloppy, this all season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was sloppy. And what did we see in this season? Sloppy football play. So again, is he doing that for the cameras? Is he doing that for the reporters? Who are you when that's not around? Do these do these young guys really respect you? Do you hold guys accountable? Yep. You know, it's so easy to point to the veterans and say that you know they say this about them. Man, those the, the, they're, they're pros. They've mm -hmm. been here and done that. They know what to say and what not to say. They're not idiots. I'm paying attention to like and you, you said, know they're, they're going to be ready. 
Like, you right. Know and you they're know they're going to be ready. They've yeah. established habits well before Nick Sirianni. Yeah. So I can't even give him credit for that. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at young guys and how they're responding. And then, like you said, the middle aged guys, how are they responding? Right. That's how I'm judging. That's how I'm judging Nick Sirianni. You know, like what, what, how, what's your ability to teach these younger guys, guys that are still learning, you know, learning how to be a pro? Mm -hmm. that, that's who I'm paying. That's how I'm gauging them. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. We're going to come back. Uh, we'll hit a couple different things Phillies, Sixers, Flyers, and then we will get into NFL free agency, D line, linebacker, and safety. We'll do the defensive side of the ball today. We'll do the offensive side of the ball tomorrow. This is for in the NFL, potential guys who maybe the Eagles might make a run at. So we'll, we'll get into that when we come back a little later. We'll talk about the Chuckster who turns 31 today. All right, let's talk about pro action restoration. You have a home, you have a business, you have a property, you go through the pain, the inconvenience of, of water, fire, smoke damage. It can be incredibly trying and you're not really sure who to reach out to. And it also happens at the most inconvenient of times, a lot of times. Pro Action Restoration is the place to reach out to. They handle this kind of stuff. And they're on call 24 hours, seven days a week to assist. Uh, I've gone through it personally. Um, and I, I had two different instances. But the latest being at my house where I had water that that came in, came down from a third floor bathroom into a bathroom in my basement and essentially ruined the wall, the ceiling, and the carpet uh, in my basement. So I had them come over. They fixed the problem. Their workers uh, were just awesome. And they handled everything from drywall to the carpeting and worked in conjunction with my insurance company. Pro Action Restoration is licensed, bonded, and fully insured. They've been serving the tri-state area for more than two decades. And, and again, it could be water, fire, smoke damage, mold remediation, and then some. They can handle it. Give them a call. 610-623-3760. 610-623-3760. Or online at ProActionRestoration.com. That's ProActionRestoration.com. Any professional sports coach will tell you there's no substitution for preparation. At Malamut & Associates, that is a tenet by which we live. We prepare from day one for victory. Anything less is not acceptable. Go passionately. Go fearlessly. Go confidently. Go first! <clears throat> Go confidently towards your goals with First Trust. Philly's hometown bank for nearly 90 years and the official bank of the Philadelphia Eagles. We're focused on getting you over the goal line. So go with conviction, go with trust, go first. and go forward with us by your side. First Trust Bank, the official bank of Philadelphia dreams. Oh, and go birds. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their fantasy pick 'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday, watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game, and the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. EA 
GLES Eagles. We're back, and that's Tone. I am Rob. We're hanging out with you on this Tuesday. We'll have Scott Lauber from the Philadelphia Inquirer tomorrow from Clearwater to talk some Phillies. He had a he had an amazing piece today, Tone, uh, where there was a, a couple of a couple of very interesting tidbits. One we talked about a little bit earlier that the Phillies actually offered more to Yamamoto than the Dodgers did. Yamamoto mm-hmm. elected to stay there, but it was twelve years, three hundred twenty-five million. Pretty pretty interesting stuff there. Um, he also. For you don't for those who don't know, John Middleton is the Phillies owner. But he was also um asked about the Bryce Harper contract extension. And it was an interesting answer. Like he said, basically, I'm not worried about it. I just hope Harper's not worried about it going into the season. You know, essentially, <laughs> I, I want him to be all the way focused, right? Um, so we did say that, but it, but it was it's interesting to note. So when Harper signed the deal. Uh, what is it, five years ago? It was a 13 year, $330 million deal. It was the largest contract in Major League Baseball history. Okay. So now the total value of the deal ranks eighth. It's still not bad considering five years later. But here's the rub. And here's what I really think is going on here the 25.8 million that he's making per year is 46th in average annual value. Okay. Is that all players, not just batters? That's everybody. Mm. So I think, again, we'll see. I think this is a, a the move is trying to get the Phillies to up the ante per year rather than adding years onto the back end of this thing. Uh, I think they want to get him into like the mid 30s from 25 up to like 35. And I think if, if that concession is made, then he and his agent Scott Boris will say, "All right, forget about the the, the years on the back end." I mean, the, the fact that we're even talking about this—that he's got eight years left—is is patently absurd. But I don't even think it's really about that. It gets him to thirty-nine years old. I think he wants more per year. Yeah, I agree. Um, to your point about you, you say he's ranked where amongst all players in the MLB? Forty-sixth. Forty-six. Okay, so he's yeah. ranked forty-sixth amongst all players. That includes pitchers and batters, right? Yep. Um, he's ranked twentieth. He's ranked twentieth. Amongst all nine pitchers, okay, he's ranked twentieth. So I tend to look more at that because pitcher money is very different from yeah everyone else's money. Um, he's ranked twentieth behind, you know, Trey Turner, who's at who's um, ranked thirteenth. Um, as of right now, Trey Turner is the is the is the Phillies' highest played nine pitcher, and it's not really a drastic difference. It's only a couple million. And then even beyond that, the highest paid non-pitcher, well, Sho- Shohei Otani is, a, is an anomaly. So let's just go to the next person, Aaron yeah, Judge. Yeah, because he's he's both. I mean, right. yeah. Aaron Judge, he's making $40 million Yep. at age 32, average annual salary. Then you got Mike Trout at 35, Anthony Rendon at 35, Francisco Lindor at 34, Carlos Carrera at 33. I think he's trying to get into that 30 range. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Can I definitively say, oh yeah, Mike Trout is better than Bryce Harper? Not at this point, no. Can I can I definitively say Aaron Judge is better than Bryce Harper at this point? No, I can't definitively say that. Mm-hmm. Um, and all those other guys as well. But here's the thing, man. You know, at the time you signed it, it was the it was the richest contract in history, dog. Like we showed our commitment to you by paying, making you the highest paid guy at that time ever. Thirteen you know? years, right, right. And it's eight years left in the deal. If 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 you had an issue with you know, first of all, I feel like an agent's job is not only to pay attention to where the market is, also pay attention to where it's going to be. Yeah. And if there's anybody I'm looking at that dropped the ball, is your agent. Yeah, Scott your Boris. Agent, yep. Your agent didn't take the market seriously enough in terms of where it was going to go. If you, if his if his agent was smart, he would have implemented. And I think you said this. Um, some sort of out or clause indicating that they would um revisit the contract. Something that would you know get incentivized the Philadelphia Phillies to pay him more, mm-hmm. right? Something that provides him flexibility. But I guess, you know, he wanted to show his commitment to the organization and to winning. But at the same time, man, you know, the market always goes up. I, I, I don't feel sorry for a guy making $25.3 million a season and his agent dropped the ball in terms of, you know, adjusting the contract in terms of where the market's going to go. I don't feel bad at all. And – for it to, is eight years left. Is eight. You said eight years left in the deal. Yeah. 
Come on, man. What, what are we doing? That, that, that's the thing. I will never get past that. I, I, I'm sorry, man. I'm not talking to anybody about extending when you have eight years left. If, if this is about money, which it may very well be at the end of the day. I would feel more comfortable if they was up front about it. Uh, me too. Like if, if Scott Boris just went to John Middleton and said, look, 25.8 is not cutting it. Uh, we need to get the, the, the dollars up here. I, I'd be more apt to that than I would adding. I'm, I'm not, I want to see what this looks like in his forties. Look, if he, if there's two years left on his deal and he's still crushing it by all means, let's talk. You want to add three more onto it? Fine. I'm not doing it now. It's way too early. I'm, I'm not doing it either. Again, they should, I, I firmly believe they should have been more upfront about their intentions. Cause I'm, I don't think they're thinking about the years. They use that as an end for the you know for the average annual salary, and, and my thing is you should have kept it hundred, keep yep. it hundred, and say, look, I got I guys rank twentieth in the MLB in terms of average annual salary amongst nine pitchers. I think I think he's provided a lot much more production than that number. Yeah, can we you know can we get that to the thirties? Mm-hmm. Can we get that to the thirties? At that point, if I'm if I'm ownership, if I'm in front office, I say, you know what. Bryce has delivered a lot for us. He has been our best player, right? He has been um, a cultural icon in, in the city since he's been here. He has been an MVP. Um, he has delivered in the playoffs, right? So, yeah, I have no problem, you know, adjusting the contract in accordance to that. But don't, 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 don't try to hide your hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the I slick that's stuff I don't like. Yeah. I've yep. always been told when you're honest, you're more likely to get what you want. Even yep. if you may not get what you want. If you're honest, at least you can say, you know what? You I know where I'm results. at. Yeah, you know where I'm at. You, I know where you're at. Yeah, I, I I would take honesty. I mean, I I say this to you all the time. Like we we try to book guests for a show, right? Um, and it, look, we we a lot of times we ask these guys just to, to to give of their time and all this other stuff. I never mind a no. I don't. I get yeah. a no. I'm moving on. Okay, no problem. Thanks. Yeah. It, it's the it's the people who either don't get back to you or kind or of string you along. Yeah, yeah. That's I the hardest that. part. Yeah, that's yeah. the hardest part. Yeah, yeah. For some, the, you know, you'd be surprised. How how many people in, in on in this world in this country are uncomfortable saying no? Yeah, yeah. You surprised? Um. All right. Elsewhere, Sixers. They're off until Thursday, so they sit here now. They have a thirty-two and twenty-two record at the All Star break. They're fifth in the East. It looks like they're going to be getting back Melton, Batum, Harris, barring any kind of setbacks, likely either this week or next week. Okay. And Bede is about what two weeks from the surgery? Is that around where we are? It feels like something like that. Yeah, I think two weeks is reasonable to say. All right, so we're about a, maybe a month away from him. Uh, if he if he comes back, some people don't believe he will, but if he comes back, um, they're they're the rest of their schedule this month is challenging. They have the Knicks at home Thursday, Cleveland at home Friday, Milwaukee at home, and then they go to Boston. So they could dip a little bit. I I really don't think there's much danger of them not making the playoffs, but they could be in that play in mix. That what mm-hmm. is it, seven to ten mix or whatever. I think they could likely be in that area. Is is the way this feels? Yeah, um, I'm going to lean more towards that six spot. Okay, I, I still I still have this inkling that they can avoid the play in ever so slightly if they can get this new nucleus to gel a little bit. But health is wealth, man. If these guys, if these guys can't suit up and give you legit minutes and qu- quality minutes at that, then then you then it's more so to your point, seven, eight, maybe nine spot. If they, if they fall out of favor like that, yeah, yeah. And I think too, like uh, like we talked about earlier, it, it, it's a really big deal that you have a coach. A, who's good and it is adaptable. Like, I don't know that this having all this change and this sort of turnover uh, would have would have been something that would have bode well for Doc Rivers. I, I think with Nick Nurse, he's a lot more adjustable and adaptable. So adding some of these new pieces, um, I, I, I think he'll be perfectly fine working these guys in and, you know, and, and doing the best that he can. Honestly, I, I really believe that he'll he'll get the most production out of these guys. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, all right, so then Flyers wise, they're at Chicago tomorrow, so they're sitting here right now at twenty nine, twenty and seven. They're in third place in the Metro uh, Conference. The, the big question for them is what if the parts are traded off? 
you know, how much of a dip did they, did they take? And this is like, to me, it's like, I wanted to make the playoffs because I want some of the younger guys to get the experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they don't, if, if it, if it does fall to that point, which I don't, it is 79% chance of making the playoffs going into that, uh, outdoor game. I, I still think they get in. Um, but if they don't, this isn't like the Sixers or the Phillies or the Eagles. It's not the end of the world. It's just not. If they yeah. Don't it's funny. The experience of them getting in. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's something that I, I would love for them to have, but more than anything, I just want them to ruin someone's day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want I want them to ruin someone's day, which they're more than capable of. Absolutely, especially with the way they play. That's what I want. Yeah, I want I want them to make a better team or an opposing team uncomfortable. Uh huh. Force them to, force them to six games. Give them a little bit of a scare. Yeah, you know, force them to seven games. Whatever it is, that's what I want to see. I, I'm with you. I, I and I think they will. They they are going to be a pain in the ass kind of team for somebody. They're they're going to be like you're going to get an eye roll from whoever gets them. Like, mm-hmm. all right, let's go. We got to play these guys because yep. you're going to get everything they have. They, they, some teams would just be laying down, and that, that's their flyers don't lay down. So I'll give them that kind of. Yeah. Thing. Another thing I'll say is, if they get to a game six with a team. That that opposing team is going to start oh. sweating a little bit. They're going to get a little tight. You are so and that's right. and that's when you catch a team when yep. they get tight when they start when they start overthinking every little thing they do. Yeah, you're, that's, you're very right. That's that's the position I want to see the Flyers put a team into. That's that's what I'm curious about. All right, let, let me throw this at you. I generally don't, you know, go down these roads, but let, let's do it here. So uh, Craig Carton of FS1 uh, on his show today, which. I don't even know what it's called, to tell you the truth. Um, the Carton Show, I believe. Oh, the, the Carton show. show. Yeah, the Carton Show. All right. So he threw this out there regarding the Eagles' uh, collapse last year. Mm-hmm. Quote, I can tell you that it is – he's saying there's something specifically that led to it. Quote, I can tell you that is a it is a problem that would splinter any group of men, any group of men. It is a real significant problem, and it cannot be fixed. I'm not going to tell you any more than that. But I know what the problem was. I know they're trying to fix it, and I don't think it can be fixed. So it'll be very interesting to see if a high-profile player is no longer with the Eagles going into the season. So, I, I, all right, a couple of things. Just on the you, reporting part. I can say that about anything in life. Right. And, I, and it, that's how you that's how you put out bullshit, and not I mean, and you're not C- correct. And you don't, and you don't, and you don't have to be held accountable for it. It's the worst kind of hot taking nonsense. If you're going to say something, say it. Don't give me. I know what it is. Uh, it's something that will split the, you know, the locker. It, it's like that to me is so weak to go that direction that he that yeah. he just went. Show some uh, conviction, Craig. Yeah, and and then look, will we follow the the breadcrumbs? If if some player who you say, what they're they're so and so's on the trading market. Yeah, then we may be, able, may be able to piece this thing together. But like that stuff to me is so I, I don't know, man. It's 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 like, dude, if you have something, say it. Yeah. If you don't, don't. Yeah. You know, like it's funny. People you, you know our guy Silio, he's contrary. He 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 can be he he can be a he can put a be a thorn in other people's side, right? Yeah. I like Sills, but listen to this though. One thing I respect about Sills is he don't just he doesn't speak like that. Yeah. If he's going to say something, he has something, he's going to say it. And he's going to be honest about it. And that's the one thing I respect about Sills is the honesty. You know, yeah. again, people have their own opinions about him. That's perfectly fine. I respect the candor. I Correct. respect the transparency. What, what what Craig Carton attempted to do just now, or whatever, whatever was yesterday, whatever, whatever, you're whatever half he in, half out. Whatever he attempted to do, it was you're, you're sitting on the fence. You're yeah. you're 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 throwing you're throwing just bait out there and just to see if the fish bite. And it, it, it's no real no real intention or means behind it. You're just trying to stimulate clicks for the show. I mean, I don't know. What are the, you know, what are the ratings on the Craig Carton show right now? I have no idea. I don't know. Here's what I'll, and I, here's where I'll give a guy credit for actually backing up what he's saying. Okay. JJ Reddick uh, was on first take today. JJ Reddick played for Doc Rivers, played for the Sixers. JJ Reddick on Doc Rivers, quote, I it, it, for with the way the Bucks are struggling. Quote, I've seen the trend for years, always making excuses. It's always an excuse. It's always throwing your team under the bus. There's never accountability with that guy. Okay. So whether you like what Reddick said or agree, 
at least he had the balls to to he said it, man. Right. I played for the guy. This is this is what it is. Good for him. Yeah, listen, Craig needs to have the courage of his conviction. Wait, I probably shouldn't use that word. I probably shouldn't use convictions. I probably shouldn't use that. Yeah. But he but but he should have the courage of his of his thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> of his thoughts. I know, but that, that but again, you know? two two stark examples. One is Reddick saying, I play for the guy. He throws his players under the bus. And Carton gives you the, I know what it is, but I'm not going to tell you. Come on, man. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to give you those two uh, two examples. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad. I'm, I'm so glad you did that, man. Look, I'm glad somebody on national television called out Doc Rivers. Seriously. Yeah. Like he, 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 he doesn't, he doesn't take accountability. He, he, he never has, in my humble opinion. I mean, yeah. he's been, he's been riding the legacy of that, salt, uh, you know, of that Celtic super team, and hasn't been good since then. I mean, the most blown. Um, lead three the most blown through and leads in in in, in the in, in the NBA. I mean, like like come on, man. So yeah, um, I'm glad JJ. I'm I'm Jack. I'm glad JJ stood out on the cliff and took the risk. Um, and uh, you know, Craig is just being Craig. It all it, it is what it is, man. It's no big deal. It means nothing in the grand scheme of things. All right, let's uh, step aside. We'll come back and we will look at players uh, who are free agents on the defensive line, at the linebacker position, at corner and safety. Maybe the Eagles take a big swing. Maybe they don't, but there's some big names out there, and we'll get into all of them when we come back. Tone to Shields, Rob Ellis on this Tuesday. We are Sports Take. All right, I'm going to tell you right now about Flynn Tree Services. They are an experienced, licensed, and insured Pennsylvania tree services company that will trim or remove any unwanted trees off of your property. They offer cost-effective solutions to any tree problem that you may face, and they are experts trimming all types of trees, and they serve southeastern Pennsylvania, South Jersey, and northern Delaware. You can go to their Facebook or Instagram page for more information or a sampling of their work. Give Flynn Tree Services a call right now, 610-850-2848, 610-850-2848, or online at flynntreeservices.com. That's flynntreeservices.com. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. At Pond Lee Hockey, we've recovered billions of dollars for our clients, and we're confident we can do the same for you. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, We've helped over 100,000 injured clients obtain some of the largest settlements in Pennsylvania. One conversation is all it takes to help you and your family get back on track. If you've been injured in an accident, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Champions on three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their Fantasy Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday, watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game 
and the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. And the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. What's up, friends? What is up? Thanks for hanging with us. Appreciate it. It is Tuesday. It is February 20th. We are, uh, as we mentioned, close to the month of March, which is amazing. Almost springtime, friends. Almost. All right. Let's look at some free agents. So a couple things just to reiterate, Tone. Uh, franchise or transition tag starts today in the NFL through March 5th. Legal tampering period begins March 11th, which means you could talk to guys, uh, you know, who, who are – either uh been franchise tagged or uh restricted you know etc um and then free agency starts on the 13th of march so that that's where we are all right um let's start with the defensive line and guys that are available now would the eagles be in the market for any of these guys could they afford any of these guys you know we'll see i think there'd have to be some creativity to pull some of these off but nonetheless all right let's start with this one the big, there's two, there, there's a couple, there's two, in my opinion, two gigantic chips here. One, Chris Jones, who is a defensive tackle, arguably the best in the game at this point for the Chiefs, and has won two straight Super Bowls with them, has been a dominant force, has has come up big in really big spots too um, for them. And we talked about this a little bit yesterday. Uh, they're, they're likely going to have to choose between Sneed and Jones. Mm-hmm. I think Chris Jones gets a big, big, gigantic bag. Uh, I think he stays there. But what do you think? Yeah, I think I think Jones stays there as well. Um, I believe in building a team from the inside out, not outside in. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Remember, they developed Snead from a fourth rounder, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't imagine that organization feels confident enough to be able to coach up and develop another young corner. You know, to play alongside Trent McDuffie. I know they know Trent McDuffie is their best corner, and they look at him as the the linchpin or the, you know, the the, the main guy in that you know in, you know in that DB room. So I think they'll ultimately let Snead walk and get his big payday. He's earned it, two time Super Bowl champion, and I think they're going to bring back Chris Jones. Um, he, I, I think he's the heart of that defense. Uh, I I think so too. And if they do allow him to get out of there. I think Chris Jones will get the biggest defensive tackle contract anybody's ever got. Yep. Yep. So That's a fact. He, he's, he's getting paid. I, he's not going to be coming here. They're, they can't uh, afford that. Uh, let me always throw this out there. Davis Price. Um, his name's uh, a Tyreon Davis Price. He was a running back. He was a third-round pick by San Francisco out of LSU in 2022. Niners waved him. Eagles picked him up, uh, put him on the practice squad. So, hmm. See what happens there. See if they can do what, what, what position is he? He's a running back. Running back. Huh. Yeah. So are they I mean, they re- remember they picked up Trey Sermon from the Niners and That's didn't right. do anything, and didn't do anything with him. Yep. So look, at this point, they're just they're just filling they're just filling themselves away around a dark room and they're just picking up whatever they can at this point. Um the 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 core move and this move means nothing in the grand scheme of things until until we see something else um this team is still going to be you know on the you know under the microscope mm-hmm. um all right so that chris jones i'm gonna go so i'm including quote unquote edge rushers as defensive linemen just for mm-hmm. the sake of this discussion all right the second guy is josh allen not the quarterback with the bills but the but the okay. edge rusher with the jacksonville jaguars Maybe the most underrated player in football, Tony. This guy's yeah. an absolute wrecking ball and and had a ridiculous season last year. Some think he, he may get franchised um, by Jacksonville. He is he has turned himself into a phenomenal player. Yeah, I think he's going to get franchise tagged. He is phenomenal. 
right? Him, Brian Burns, those kind of guys. I think they're ultimately going to get franchise tag. Yeah, I mean, his, his production, and, and again, would the Eagles be in the market for these high, high, high level guys? Probably not, no. um, but still. And you're right, Brian Burns is another one. He's a defensive uh, end for Carolina. They've, had, they've been terrible, but he's been good despite all their mess. I think the Eagles should think about targeting A.J. Epinensa. Yeah, former, from the Bills. For- Former DN, former DN from the Bills. His estimated market value right now is at five point six million average mm-hmm. annual salary. I think that's a name they should think about going after. Um, AJ Panissa has been real productive for uh, the Bills, and he's always done a good job, you know, in his role over the past two seasons. Um, in twenty twenty three, he put up six and a half sacks. Twenty twenty two, six and a half sacks. So he's been consistent, and he's only played about. Uh, 38, 30, 36 to 38% of the snaps for that defense over the past couple of seasons. You know, he put up that he, he put up that kind of production, you know, only playing about 36% of the snaps. Mm-hmm. I would love to see him in Philadelphia. I think I think that's a move that they should consider. Yeah. Iowa, Iowa kid, young guy. Um that that could that could be a move right there. AJ Epinensa. Good choice. I like that. Uh, I like that. All right, let me throw a couple other guys now. Again, you may not be familiar with all of these names, um, but Justin, uh, I'm going to butcher the name. Get ready. Uh, Matabuke, who is a D tackle out of Baltimore. Um, he's part of a, a, you know, an ensemble cast of a lot of good defensive players on that side of the ball. But this guy has really burst onto the scene and, and become that guy. And I, I think the Ravens would be nuts to let him walk because he is a foundational piece for a long time, still relatively young. Yeah, yeah, I agree. As a matter of fact, let's see. What was, you said Mbaa Muke? Uh, Matabuke, M-A-D-U-B-U-I. I want to see if I can find that market value because – I'm going to say he's in like the 18. Let's see here. Mm, I don't know. I think he's re- he may be restricted. I'm not mm. saying. Oh, here it is. Here he is. Okay, Justin Matabuke, Baltimore market value right now. Ooh, how much? His market value right now stands at an average annual salary of twenty point three million. Yeah. For, for, former former third rounder. Yeah, and he's going to he he's going to have his his pick of the litter. Yeah, that, yeah, that's tough. That's 26 years old. Yep. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's no denying it. That's a lot. Um, mm-hmm. so anyway, he's he's one of them out there. Christian Wilkins from the Dolphins, uh, who's been phenomenal there, has worked out very well for there. Guy who's been around a long time now, Danil Hunter from uh Minnesota. Mm. Still, still very, very productive. Christian Wilkins' market value is twenty point nine million. The DTs are getting paid, man. Yeah, they are. They get paid like edge rushers used to. Mm-hmm. Not that they're still not getting paid. Uh, Leonard Williams, can't believe his deal's up already. But uh, he, remember, he got moved to Seattle. Right, uh, right, right. I mean, I mean, that's why they, that's why Giants traded him. They, they knew they weren't going to pay him. Yeah. Yep. So he's available. Um, Bryce Huff. This check him out. Tone. He's a, he's an edge rusher from the Jets. He might be in that cheaper range. Bryce mm. Huff, H U F F. I think Bryce he could be a guy Huff. that you could get at a decent price. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see if they got something up for him. I'm going to guess he's Huff. in like the 13 range. Bryce Huff. Bryce Huff. Bryce Huff. They might Bryce. have him listed as a linebacker or 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 a DN. He's an edge. Okay. Let's see. Not seeing, let me just search his name. I would not waste time. Bryce Huff. Is that B-R-Y-C-E? Yes, like Bryce Harper. Uh, last name Huff. Bryce Huff. All right, here he is. Bryce Huff. <clears throat> 25 years old. Went to Memphis. His current market value. Hmm, not bad. 9.2 million average annual salary. Okay. Uh, as far as stats go, he had 10 sacks in 2023. Hmm. That's had a guy to look at. There's there's one, Bryce Huff. That's a, okay. that's a guy to look at. And again, these are names that, that we can probably consider in the event. And he was an undrafted guy too. Oh yeah, he's looking to get he's, he's looking to maximize his value. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Let me let me not say I wouldn't be surprised if 
if things don't bode well with the hindsight Reddick situation, uh, the Eagles do have some names they can probably target to try to supplement that loss. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying they're Hassan Reddick level, but look, man, you got to balance. You got to balance that defense out a little bit more. And if the money don't make sense with Reddick, you got some options you could target in free agency to try to bring them in at a cheaper price tag. Mm-hmm. And then you can allocate more resources, maybe to the linebacker, maybe to the safety position. You got to get creative with the money here. Oh, for sure, for sure. All right, let me give you a couple other names. Uh, Zadarius Smith, edge guy from Cleveland, um, is one to look at. DJ Reader, D tackle from Cincinnati, and again, I don't, I, I think some of these are going to be out of the Eagles' range, but um, there are a couple more. There's Chase Young, who is who was now a well was a 49er to close out last year. All of those guys, maybe, maybe could be yeah. could be in the mix. Yeah, Chase Young's market value is 13 million on a one year deal. You know, he still has to prove he can stay healthy. So I have a hard time believing he'll get anything beyond a one year deal. Yeah. So maybe uh, again, maybe. that's possible. Yeah. Um, maybe another option for the Eagles. If Reddick walks, you never know. We'll find out though. Okay. All right. Let me give you some linebackers. Frankie uh, Louvu uh, or Lavu from the um, Carolina Panthers is a free agent. Um, still relatively young, younger than a couple of these other guys that we're, we're going to be talking about. So he, that's a possibility. Uh, maybe to get out of Carolina. Frankie Louvu. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see what his market value is. Frankie Louvu's market value is 11.2 million per season. 11.2. It's three times undrafted they paid guy, all, all their linebackers. But, yeah. Um, in 2023, he had five and a half sacks. 2022, he had seven sacks. The moment he the moment he got more opportunities, because his first few years he was only, you know, on the field for, you know, for example, 2021 he only was on the field 22.9 percent of the time on defense. 2020, 22 mm-hmm. percent of the time. Um, then, tw- but but then in 20, I'm sorry, 2020, 22 percent of the time. Um, but then in 2022, when he got more snaps, they asked they they put more responsibilities on his plate. Um, he played 940 snaps for him, which was 85% of the defensive snaps. He put up seven sacks and 111 tackles. And then um, in 2023, he played 925 snaps, which was 93% of the total defensive snaps. Gave you five and a half sacks, 125 tackles, 66 mm-hmm. solo, two forced fumbles. I mean, Frankie Louvu is a player, and he can definitely change the complexion of, of the linebacker from overnight. But the question uh, becomes, do the Philadelphia Eagles want to pay that number, that price tag to a linebacker? And that's our and that's always been our, our issue with the Philadelphia Eagles. That's right. Uh Levante David, veteran. Mm-hmm. Too uh, old for me. Too old. Yeah, that's that's if you can get him on the cheap. Too old, man. 34 yeah. years old. Um yeah. that's a lot of tread. I'm cool. I'm, I'm, I'm I like Levante David. Don't do not get me wrong, but I'm cool off that man. He he, he he put up a he, he gave you production last year though. I mean, look, he played 908 snaps through 15 games, which is 84% of the snaps for the you know for the Buccaneers defense, four and a half sacks, 133 tackles, 86 solo. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's he's a good, he's a really good player, but 34 years old. My fear is that when we get him, that's gonna be my <laughs> my fear is yeah, listen, when we get him, you know, uh he's gonna age on the flight over. <laughs> that's my fear. Uh, all right. How about Kenny Moore, corner? Uh, or, or excuse me, uh, uh, linebacker from uh, from Indy. Kenny Moore. Let's see here. Or did Let's I lump him in? Yeah. Did I lump him in with the linebackers? Uh, I, don't, I I may have lumped him in with the linebackers. What is he an edge or something like that? Kenny yeah, Moore. Oh, he's yeah. a, oh, he's a DB. He's a DB. Yeah, he's a corner. Yeah. Uh, all right, yeah, let's yeah. forget him. Patrick Queen is a free agent in Baltimore. I didn't realize he was a free agent. Also. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not even. Nothing to you, but I'm not even entertaining Patrick, Patrick Queen. He's he's going to be the probably. He's probably going to end up being the highest paid linebacker this this off season in terms of right. you know guys that get paid. I'll give you one more. This guy's a tackling machine. Jordan Brooks, mm. Seattle. He is a tackling machine. 26 years been. old. Yeah. 26 years old. Hmm. He was he's a former first rounder. Yeah. Uh his average and his estimated average annual salary 
is 11.3 million. 11.3. Again, Mm -hmm. the Philadelphia Eagles. Do we see them bucking their trend at linebacker? Um, Over the past three seasons, wow, this dude's been insane. In 2021, in 2021, he, the league in tackles, didn't he? he, he, in he had a hundred. He, in, listen to this. In 2021, he had 184 total tackles, mm-hmm. 108 solo. Mm-hmm. 2022, he had 161 tackles, 103 solo. And then in 2023, he had 111 tackles, 11, 111 tackles, 62 solo. But he also added in four and a half sacks with that, and a forced right. fumble and an interception. So this guy is around. He's a a physical dude, he gets around, he moves, um, is always near the ball. I like that. I like that a lot. He also paid uh, he also played significantly less snaps than he has the past few years. Um in 2021 and 2022, he averaged over a thousand defensive snaps. Um in 2023, he only has 766 defensive snaps. Maybe they were using them different, who knows? But yeah, man, um, that guy's a machine. All right, let's uh, let's jump to uh, defensive back. I'm going to give you some safeties, and I'll give you some corners. Okay. Again, a lot of these I think will be too rich for the Eagles' blood, but Antoine Winfield is the biggest name on the market. They may safety. franchise tag him. Yeah. I, that's what I'm hearing. Yep, that could happen. That could happen. Uh, Legereus Sneed, you know, you can only, you only tag one of them. <laughs> so if you're going to try and go down that road again, with Chris Jones, or you just view it as we're going to pay Chris Jones crazy money. Somebody's got to, somebody's got to walk. Sneed's played the inside. He's played the outside. He was originally a slot corner. Now he's, now he's been in it, you know, outside corner. This guy would look great in the Eagles uniform, but he would, he would, but I think he may be a little too rich for them right now, given the amount of money they got tied up in that position already. We don't even know what they're going to do with Bradbury, um, his deal. So it's, it's going to be complicated. All right, Jalen Johnson of the Bears. Another I guy. Think, I think he know. gets franchise tagged as well. Yeah. Uh, Kendall Fuller of hmm. the Commanders. It's a cornerback. 29 years old. Hmm. 15 games played, over 1,000 snaps, 79 tackles, two interceptions. In 2023, he made $10 million of average annual salary. As of right now, on the open market, his market value is as is as of us. They have him estimated market value at fourteen point one million. That might be a little too rich for Eagles right now. And, and again, this all depends on what moves they make to free up some cash. But uh, I don't know, man. I don't know, Kendall Fuller. I've, I've I've seen him at his best. I've seen him at his worst. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a huge. I'm not as big a fan of his as some of these other guys. Uh, right. Chidobi Awuzie, uh, corner from Cincinnati. I wonder if he's a he's a possible. I, I, it feels like to me with corner, they're going to take they're going to roll some dice on Isaiah Rogers and draft a guy. I don't know that they're paying any of these kind of prices for for some of these cats. It's possible Isaiah Rogers was he a, a slot corner or a boundary corner? Mm, I'll tell you in a minute. Can't I can't really remember, but they don't have the market value for Chidobi Azui up. But in twenty twenty three, he made seven point two five million. I would imagine uh, at 28 years old, maybe his market value is a, is a little higher than that with the salary cap going up. It's a possibility. Mm-hmm. So he was a, a – Rogers. just to give you a little background, 5'10", 170, came out of UMass. He was a sixth-round pick. Wow, this guy is overachieved uh, in a big way. But anyway, uh, he was a 211th overall pick, and he was acquired in a trade with the Jets for Quincy Wilson. Uh, which is a bad trade for the Jets. Uh, he had a 101 yard kick return uh, in uh, 2022. Uh, it's, so after the season, he was placed on injured reserve. Actually, in December, he was placed on injured reserve with a knee injury. He suffered against the Rams. Finished the year with 34 tackles, three pass breakups, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. In June of 2023, he was suspended for gambling. Uh, accused of opening a sports book account under a name of a personal associate, uh, making roughly 100 bets, including bets on his own team. Oof. Uh, June of 28 reported that Rodgers, among several NFL players, suspended for the entirety of the 23 season. Shortly after the suspension was announced, he was waived by the Colts and then signed by the Eagles. Um, 
That's all I got. That's all I got right now on him. Okay. I don't like you know, any bet on his own team, man. That that's that's troubling. That's a little concerning yeah, for me. Yeah, it's idiotic. Um, I want to think he learned from that mistake. Yeah, I, I like to think that. I hope, but he's probably got one more chance to to, to get it together here. Uh, but yeah, anyway, definitely. And then there's older guys. You know, Stephon Gilmore is a free agent. Um, you know, Geno Stone, who's a safety. With the Ravens as a free agent, uh, I'm not saying all these guys are all, but uh, Xavier McKinney, who's a safety with the Giants, Cameron Curl uh, with Washington. There's some okay safeties on the market. Yeah, if yeah, there are. Adrian Phillips out of New England. I think the, uh, the 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 Patriots just cut him. Yeah. So let's see here what he did for them. Adrian Phillips through 16 games play. Oh wow, he didn't really play too much in uh. In 2023, I wonder why. Probably just couldn't get on the field. Yeah, he was under. He was under the guy as well. It's, but it's interesting though. Years past, he's always played 700, 800, 700 snaps. Huh. Wonder what happened in, in 2023. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Elsewhere, uh, Matthew Slater retired uh, after this guy. What a career. Uh, Arguably, you know, right there with any special teams player uh, to have ever played, but he made 10 Pro Bowls, uh, played 16 seasons. Belichick said he's by far the best Pro Bowler or a best safety or special teams player, sorry, that he ever played uh, for or ever had. So he retires after 10. Uh, Pro wow. Spent this, spent this whole career in New England. Yeah. Wow. Won a lot of championships. He's only behind. Trent Williams, in terms of guys who were active, uh, in, in terms of Pro Bowls, Trent has eleven, and Slater was try, uh, tied with Aaron Donald. For Thirty-eight time. years old. Yo, know, did you know this guy Slater has he, in, in the NFL? He he didn't catch not one single receiving touchdown. Just shows you, kids, you get the art of special teams down, man. You can you can turn it into a career. His yeah. dad was a was a phenomenal offensive lineman, Jackie Slater. For the Rams, like a great, 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 great player. Yeah, listen to this. Also, kids, Matthew Slater never caught a pass in the NFL for you know for a touchdown, not one. Right. But guess what? He carved out a 16 year career and 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 left the casino with 30 million dollars. <laughs> so if you so if, so if you're smart with your money, kids, you dedicate 16 years or something, and you leave with 30 million dollars, an average just an average salary of what 1.5 2 million a year. Listen, kids. If you can, if you if you can, if you can get to the NFL, mm -hmm. special teams, and you're good at it, and you're dedicated to it, and you're smart with your money, you can live a very good life. That's a good point. It is a very very good point. Yeah, okay. kudos to him um, on a long career. Cameron Hayward had surgery. Um, he was you could tell he was a guy who was really kind of limping to the finish line last season. Um, and he talked about how rough it was for him physically, and actually uh, contemplated retiring. But he sent a picture of himself out uh, from the, I guess, the operating room uh, and, and said, tired of doing stuff on one leg. Uh, now I got my two legs going, basically. He had 33 tackles last year, two sacks in 11 games, um, had six tackles in the, in the Steelers' playoff loss, but really was playing like compromised. He was not himself uh, in any way, shape, or form. So see see him keep it going here uh, because that, that dude has been – not only a great player, but he was the NFL man of the year. He he is good for he's good for the NFL and he's good for sports. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm glad to see him uh, you know, get his get his act together. Um so college football. Did you see this? They're they're um expands playoffs from four to twelve. Um and via ESPN, the current four team format will grow to twelve. The field will consist of the five highest ranked conference championships along with seven at large berths. So uh, it usually will result in the champions of the SEC, Big Ten, Big 12, and ACC automatically getting in. If, however, the champion of one of the Power Four conferences finishes lower in the official rankings below the two champions of, of other eligible conferences, like the AAC or whatever, uh, they'll have to qualify to get in. Mm. So college football expanding, which, uh, you know, more more money. Mo money. Yep. Yeah, Mo and also, it also gives other programs an opportunity at glory. I That's mean, true. 
you know, sometimes it's about matchups and timing. If you know, you know, you know, did you wake up on the right side of the bed that day? Could yeah. you know, could the, could one of these top teams get caught by one of these lower tier teams? Mm-hmm. I think that makes it more exciting. Yeah, makes it more exciting, and it also gives other programs more opportunities to make more money and show and show off the quality of their program and their personnel. Give you know, you know, gives players you know a, a better chance at showcasing their talents, and maybe they can you know up their draft stock. Yeah, you're right. No, on a higher you're level right. on a national scale. Yeah, and you don't want it to always be the haves. You don't want it to always be the upper crust. You want mm-hmm. to give it's it's like it's the beauty of what basketball is. You know, the NCAA tournament. You have this the the underdog, you know, team that just makes this crazy ride. Yes. It's a lot harder in football to do that. Yep, it gives the underdogs, you know, just as just as well of a shot as, you know, some of the better teams. And it also, in my humble opinion, it's going to force these top tier programs to stay on APs and Qs and not sleep on these teams and think they can mail it in. Yeah. Yeah, I think all those things are uh, are true. All right, we're going to come back and it is the 61st birthday of Charles Barkley. So we're going to we're going to dig into some of our and you guys all want to chime in in the chat, some of our favorite uh sports media personalities. And that could be individuals and then we'll get into, you know, what shows we like the best. Um we'll, we'll dig into all those kind of things when we come back. Don't go anywhere. That's Tone, I'm Rob. We'll be right back. I remember getting my heart broken when they lost the Super Bowl in 2004. We were big Eagles fans. We moved to South Philly because of the Eagles. When they won, we went straight to Broad Street and uh, everybody was going nuts over there. And it was just a, a memory that you'll never forget. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. At Pond Lee Hockey, we've recovered billions of dollars for our clients, and we're confident we can do the same for you. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, we've helped over 100,000 injured clients obtain some of the largest settlements in Pennsylvania. One conversation is all it takes to help you and your family get back on track. If you've been injured in an accident, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Champions on three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their Fantasy Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday. Watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game. And the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. 
Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. For the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. I want to say the show. Appreciate you guys all uh, taking part, as always. That's Tone. I am Rob. We're Sports Take. All right. So, uh, Charles Barkley, 61 years old today, and has really um, transformed himself into, you know, just, just uh, to me, maybe – is the most beloved sports personality. I mean, I don't, I don't really think that's crazy to say he has, he was a guy who for a lot of his playing career and the early part of his media career, I think was very controversial, but Mm. to the point now where he's beloved and look, great player, hall of fame player, uh, won the uh, MVP in 1993, 11 time all-star won won the all-star game MVP. He was a five time first team, all NBA all rookie team. Uh, I mean, number retired by the Sixers and the Suns. We could go on and on and on. Incredible career. Uh, Was a Sixer from 84 to 92. But to me, if he is on tone, I'm I'm stopping and watching. I'm stopping. No matter what I'm doing, I want to hear what he has to say because it's either funny, poignant, or real. He's going to call somebody out. Like I I think Barkley is just the best. So – Right. Let's throw it out there, man. Let's talk about Chuck a little bit, but give me, you know, your best sports personalities. Oh man, some of my some of my favorite. You know, I, I don't even want to say best, right? I'm going to say my favorite. My favorite. Um, it's your favorite. It's not the best. Yeah. It's, it's your yeah. opinion. Yeah, because some of these guys aren't the most articulate at all, but it's because they're so they're so they have they have a magnetism or a gravity about them, right? Um, one guy that comes to mind that I think everybody is growing to love and growing to hate at the same time. Is my man Uncle Shay Shay. I love Shannon Sharp, man. I, I love his vibe. I love the energy. I've been a fan of Shannon Sharp since you know, since his days on the pre and post game on um CBS. You know, I've been a fan of him since then. And um, you know, it's just so dope that the world is, you know, really, you know, starting to find out who, who Shannon Sharp is, man. You know, you know, the the, the personality. It's dope, man. He he he's fun. Um, he had he has one liners for days, mm-hmm. and uh man, you don't get more inarticulate than that. But guess what? He does a hell of a job. He and and, and, and he's fun as hell to watch. He, he I love is, him. man. He's unique. He's got he's Very got unique. a. Don't you almost sometimes feel like, man? How is he even going to get this thing out? Like you feel like he's struggling, but he's not. He always gets it back to like, oh wow, okay. I wasn't yeah. thinking that way, but it, it, yeah, he's cool. He's, he's very he, he's very colorful with his words, man. And he's funny as hell. Yeah. Funny as hell, man. I, I I love Shannon Sharp for real. Yeah. Uh, he has he has become that guy. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah um, I, got other, I got other names too. But um, yeah. you know, who do you have on your list? Yeah, give, no, give I don't. I don't. I it's 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 kind of random, man. Like some yeah, of them are. Random too. Well, some of them are like random, real personality driven types, like Barkley and and Shannon Sharp. Mm-hmm. Others, I just appreciate the the way they call it. Like, I'm a huge fan of Lewis Riddick. I think Lewis yeah. Riddick is gives you a great perspective from a guy who played and worked in front offices. And I also think he's got a very sharp uh, eye for scouting talent. So if he's telling me about somebody, I'm I'm looking out for them, whether it's in the college draft or whatever, or if he's talking, you know, kind of breaking film down. I just mm-hmm. think he's really, really good. I, I and I and I don't think they they beat him into the ground uh, on ESPN like they do some other personalities. I think he's just perfect. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's that's a good pool. I like uh, I like Ryan Clark. I liked when he was on uh, ESPN. His contract's up. Yeah, I think his contract just ended with them. So yeah, uh, who knows what his future holds there? But he's doing a great job on uh, the po- uh, the Pivot podcast with him, Fred Taylor, and Shannon Crowder. I love Shannon Crowder. I love Fred Taylor. I love Fred Taylor. I love, I love what they're bringing to the space as well. Um, I think Cam Newton also has a really good um, sports podcast as well. Um, I like Cam Newton as a sports personality. Um, he did a hell of a job at the Super Bowl. Man, has some of the most compelling um, and most entertaining interviews and interactions. Um, has surprise guests. Um, I'm also a fan of um I'm also a fan of Dan Orlovsky. Yes. You know, um I don't agree with everything he says, but I like Dan. I like I I I I like how I like how pragmatic he can be. Um I what like, I, like I like about him is he you know he puts the work in. 
Yes, yes, like that part. He is, and when he 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 does, I think he does very good film breakdowns where it's not boring. Yeah, I right, check. Watch this, and you see the receiver coming, and he'll do a very good job. He's animated. Yeah, and you know that he. The, the thing I respect is I I I he. I respect guys who really do put the work in, and I know that guy puts the work in. He's yeah. very good. Yeah, I like. Uh, I also like Chris Boussard. He's on FS1. Yeah. Um, uh, he's a basketball guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Taylor Rooks, Joy Taylor. I like them as well. Um, I like the. I like what they bring to the space. Um, you know, both intellectually and aesthetically. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I got to give a shout out to. Uh, Stephen A. Gilbert Arenas, uh, Barrett Brooks. I love what they bring to the space. Mm -hmm. um, I got a uh, Robert Ellis on my list. I got a uh, uh, deep. Got, you know, I got D Gun on my list. You know, I got Dan Cilio. I got I got John McMullen. I got Jody Mack. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got a uh, I got Bill Colarulo on there. You know, I guess you know I got some. I got Seth Joyner on there too. You know, you know, just to name a few. Covered all your bases. Uh, I'll tell you who else I like. Uh, Mark Zeta. I got him on there too. Can't forget him. Uh. I think Scott Van Pelt's awesome. I, I think he he is as good in the studio as there is. He's great at reading a highlight, getting giving enough the proper energy to the highlight, also kind of pivoting off into an interview, pivoting off into something funny. He's got a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think he really is what a studio host should be. I, I think he's really good at what he does. Yeah, you know that you know that jumps into your next category though, right? You know, fair yeah. studio shows. Yes. All right, give me yours. Um, to be frank, I don't watch too much studio or network television like that. Um, but the, the shows that come to mind for me inside the NBA. Yes. Um, I like speak with uh, Emmanuel Alcho and, and Shady McCoy and uh, James Jones, Joy Taylor. I like that show. Um, I even like first take, I, you know, I, I, I know Stephen A. Smith is a, is a controversial figure, but I, I like Stephen A. Smith. Um, I don't, yeah. I don't agree with everything he says, but I think he's entertaining. I like, him. uh, Shannon Sharp, of course. Um, uh, as far as again, I don't really, I don't watch too much network television. Yeah. Um, I do like that NBA countdown with um, I think it's Stephen A. Michael Michael Wilbon, Greeny. I think I don't know if that's still the roster, but uh, was... uh, is it still Greeny? Um, I don't think Greeny's hosting it anymore. It might be Malika Andrews, maybe. Oh, uh, I'm trying to remember who else is. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, okay. man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Michael Wilbon is another one that's, that's pretty dope, too. Legend. Been doing Been for around a around a long time, uh, for sure. All right. I will. I I think I agree with you. I think the GOAT is inside the NBA. Um, it, it is where I really give that show credit is the producers let it go. They don't try to muzzle Charles or Shaq or Kenny mm -hmm. or whatever. They have fun. They let them have fun. They let them. It, it doesn't feel like a stuffy studio show. And and that to me is great. Yeah, you get the analysis. You'll get Kenny going up to the big board and uh, showing you things. And they all that. balance each other out. Yes, and Ernie's a great traffic cop. So I think that show. I love Ernie. Love Ernie. Well, it's man. perfect because he isn't trying to be the man. He he's he's not trying to make himself you know the front guy. He knows the stars. He knows Charles is the star. Shaq's the star. Kenny's the star. I'm I'm going to make sure I get the most out of these guys. But he'll also he's not afraid to take a shot. Get a little zing in there. Yeah, he's you know? he's very he's very slick. You gotta you gotta watch Ernie. Yeah. Um, I, I also think the, another reason why they have the the free reign they do, they're on TNT. Yeah, you know they're not you know they're not on like a ESPN a Disney owned product, right? They're not on you know Fox and all like they're on they're on TNT and TNT. Um, they push the boundaries just in their other content. So I think I think that's another reason why they had that flexibility. And TNT knows what they have with that group. Yeah. They're, they're they're not crazy. Whatever those guys ask for, they're going to provide it. Oh, and they get paid very, very well, for sure. I would say the other one that I really like is ESPN College Game Day. I just love the whole atmosphere. They go to a campus. You got the, all, all the students in the background going crazy. They do the feature pieces on, on certain guy. This guy overcame what I watched something last night, man, and it wasn't on College Game Day. I think it was just on ESPN. There's this kid. And I'll, I'll pull up his name, but he's playing Division One baseball at East Carolina mm -hmm. with a prosthetic leg. Whoa! Yeah, he was in a boating accident a couple of years ago. Lost the, the you know the his his knee from uh, his leg from below his knee. He lost the bottom portion of his leg. Got a prosthetic that works well with baseball with some of the you know the skill set that that aligns with baseball. And he's actually playing D one. His first at bat this year, he drew a walk. But like. 
it, it was just such an uh, inspiring story. Like his mother after the accident came in, and this kid has a great attitude. Uh, what, what was it? What is he? A, a, what is he? A catcher, a pitcher? What is it? What is it? I what, think uh, he's an outfielder, DH. Um, I'm gonna find, I'm gonna pull it up right now. Player with Preston. All right, I have it. So uh, his name is Parker Bird, B Y R D. He's a sophomore. Um, and he had a bottom part of his right leg amputated after a boating accident in 2022. And the school believes that he is the first division one player playing with a prosthetic leg. So it, wow. it, it's pretty freaking cool, man. But anyway, they, they do a lot of those kind of pieces uh, on, on people who have overcome things. And I love, I'm a sucker. That's one of the reasons why when I was a kid, I loved sports illustrated. Yeah. I liked it when they would, Hey, let's talk about this series and all that. But I like the feature pieces on the on people, and that's what really kind of gets me. But um, so I think ESPN College Game Day is really good. I think, like I said, Scott Van Pelt's show is a good studio show mm -hmm. um, in general. Um, but yeah, I, like I am not. My cup of tea isn't so much sort of the fake debate stuff. Sometimes, like mm -hmm. I think Stephen A is very authentic and, and does an unbelievable job. But I think there's so many knockoffs of him now. Where it just it gets it, it gets tiresome for me a little bit uh, with that. Like I'm with you. I don't watch a ton of them either. The ones I watch, I, I really like. Yeah, yeah. You know, I watch first take for the personalities. You know, yeah. I like Steve. I like you know, I like I like the, the thing about Stephen A is no matter what platform he's on, he's the exact same dude. And I think that that, that, that goes a long way with me. I never yeah. feel like he's putting on. Um, I mean, he's a, he's an entertainer. He knows what he knows how to communicate. He's very. My man has full utilization of that dictionary and say, <laughs> <laughs> but overall, though, man, yeah, network television is just not what it used to be. But you know, you still you and cable television, television rather, but you yeah. still have uh, you still have, you still have your, your your shows in there that you know that definitely stands out. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, all right, just sitting here right now, it's February twentieth. I want you to tell me what your gut is saying regarding the Eagles taking big swings this offseason. Do you feel like it is a fence swinging kind of thing, or do you think they're 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 just going to look to to build depth on the defensive side and and you know just stay with the baseball vernacular, get, get hit some singles here and, and and try and build a foundation? I think if they're going to take the biggest swing, I think they're going to take the biggest swing. At what position? Let's go. Right, 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 right. That's what I'm trying to figure out. It's like the moment I the moment I think I have one, I say to myself, mm, "Well, what about this detail?" I but to be but to be frank though, I think they're going to take the biggest swing at corner. Mm. Mm. I think that's where they take the biggest swing. I okay. know that's where a lot of their money on defense is tied up, but I think they're going to I, I think they're going to figure out the James Bradbury situation, and I think they're going to take a big swing at corner. Okay, that, 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 that's what I think. Yeah, I mean, I just I can't until they show me otherwise. I can't believe they're going to spend a lot on linebacker. Right, because think about it. So far, what have they done? They brought in a cheap ass linebacker and a cheap ass running back. <laughs> so far, they're on schedule. <laughs> and hope Isaiah Rogers turn, <laughs> turns out. So far, uh, they're on schedule. Uh, uh, all right, so, I, so take take linebacker out. Safety, they don't usually like to pay a safety. Oof. Here, all signs either point to corner tone or if Reddick is traded, edge. Edge, yeah. you know, that's it. Because they're not going to – if they're going to bring somebody in, they'd probably bring, bring Fletcher back in at not a crazy number. And they have Carter and they have Davis, who they're counting mm -hmm. on at defensive tackle. Yep, so I think it's either got to be edge or corner. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I don't consider an O-line move a big swing. That's par for the course for them. Yeah, but, but yeah, man. So far, the linebacker position and the running back position—they're showing you the moves or the actions are showing you they're going cheap there. Now look, it's a depth. The practice squad bodies. Look, you never know, man. You want you want to give yourself enough of a sample size of players to pull from, but so far, I'm not impressed. Yeah, it, yeah, it is early, but I'm not either. I'm, I, yeah, I, it's I still, early. I'm still of the belief they'll get something done with Hassan Reddick. I feel like they will too. Because he's not the type who's going to burn a bridge or try to detonate anything. And and usually if that's the case, both sides are willing to talk. You can get something done. And they I think they know down deep 
you know, the guy's underpaid. They got him on a great deal. They know that they know that. They know they know he's definitely given them a lot of production over the past couple of years. Uh but it's just the fact of the matter is they got to come to a conclusion about where his value lies. Um, I'm personally not of the mindset to to really establish a guy's value. That's not my job. But if I had to surmise, I think the Philadelphia Eagles are trying to keep him in that 17 to 19 million dollar range. I don't think they want him scratching 20 million. If I had to guess, I don't know that any, I I you might be right. I don't know that anything below 20 satisfies him and his agent considering what some of these other guys are getting on the edge yeah and that's you know. and, that, and that's what makes the com- makes the conversation that much more complicated yeah i mean you're talking about a guy who's what 30 whatever he is 29 30 29 at the end of the current contract he'll end up being 31 i wonder he's if he kinda, gave- he's kind of like on dallas goddard's track at the end of their current contract he'll be 31 i wonder if he gave him what what would amount to twenty a year for this year and next year for twenty four and twenty five? I I think that would satisfy both parties. Mm. But then again, here's the Eagles' quandary. Sweats in the last year of his deal too. Mm-hmm. Those you guys can't... aren't. They're not TJ Watt. You know, can right. you afford to pay them both twenty a year? Right, and also you can't just be giving away twenty million dollar you know annual salaries to everybody that you like. And on top of that, you got Devontae Smith contract coming up, who's likely going to be a twenty million plus a million dollar guy. Uh, then you got Landon Dickerson, who's likely going to be a twenty million dollar guy. You know, Jordan Melada, he's going to get re up soon, and he's likely going to be a twenty million dollar guy. They have some tough decisions. They have some tough decisions to make, Robert. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about the other positions too. Like, um, See, this is where they might end up just really cheaping out on running back and linebacker and safety because mm-hmm. you're going to put so much into those edge guys and so much into maybe corner. The other problem is you're going to be eating money with Bradbury mm-hmm. on top of it. Right. Sheesh. You know, they can free up some money by extending some guys. You know, like we mentioned Hassan Reddick, they can free up some money extending Devontae to alleviate the base salary when they pick up the fifth year option. Um, they get a limit, they could alleviate some things with Landon Dickerson as well. Um, I think the salary cap is supposed to be like 250 million. They can give them some extra money on top of the 20 they already have available. So they're gonna have they're gonna have to be very calculated with how they you know spend the resources and also who they retain, who they let go, who are they comfortable cutting, mm-hmm. things of that nature. Yeah, I think it, you know the the um the good news is Howie's incredible at 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 juggling the cap at doing yeah. things to. You know, whatever it is, kicking a can, a can down the curb or or some of the other stuff. He he is, I think, the best in the league. So if we, we probably do spend a little bit too much time worrying about the money situation, he usually figures out a way to get it done, um, you know, with them. Oh, did you hear the uh, the, the Peter King thing that where he said that uh, it, it, what he's hearing and what he thinks it's going to be is the Browns for the Brazil game? Oh, yeah, yeah, we talked about that. We yep. talked we about talk- yesterday. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, that to me, I, I thought them or the Falcons made the most sense, but that yeah. that turned out to be a really good game. Yeah, yeah. I asked you uh, <laughs> at face value. Uh, oh, who, who would I would take? Yeah, I take the Browns. Who, yeah, yeah. Same, same here. Same it's here. Because that, that that defense, man. Well, that it's defense. and the big thing for the Browns is they need to get a really like a great year out of Deshaun Watson because so far. I mean, you bit the bullet. yeah, you bit the bullet the first year, knowing it was going to be, knowing it was he was going to be suspended. It was right. kind of ugly. He had a mulligan the first year. Then the yeah. second year, just couldn't stay healthy. Yeah, couldn't stay healthy, and you know that's that's the trouble too with throwing a guy back in after missing a lot of time. Um, mm-hmm. But he's going to have to be really good. He's the, he's in that like spot. There's a few guys like Justin Herbert next year with Jim Harbaugh has to go out and be awesome. Yes. Jalen Hurts might fall into that category. He does. I think he does. Jalen Hurts has to be – he has to be great. Yeah. You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, I mean, what quarterbacks can we can we say without a shadow of a doubt isn't entering the season under a microscope? Um, Joe Burrow, he has to find a way to stay healthy. He's got to stay – Tua's got to have a big year. Yeah, and, also, and listen to this. Joe Burrow, he's one of the older young guys, right? I think Joe Burrow, Probably as of right now – 
He's yeah. like twenty. He's like twenty eight or something yeah. like that. He's a he's a old. He was an old. Well, he was rookie. five years in college because he. Yeah, yeah he he was an older rookie. Him. Joe Burrow is twenty seven years old. Okay, twenty seven years old, and and when his contract ends, he'll be thirty three. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. They gotta, you know, those injuries they don't get they don't get easier to deal with. No. No, like to me, it, it, it you wouldn't put it in the category of hot seat, but what you the category you put it in is, like so, Burrow, it's not about ability, it's about staying healthy. Herbert, there's no more excuses with garbage coaching. You got Jim Harbaugh, who's been very good with developing quarterbacks, right? Um, Tua, it's hey, it, it, you guys look great in September and October, you know when it's warm and everything's perfect, rolling it up on guys. Mm -hmm. Where are you guys as a team, you know, in tough spots? Right. So that that's him and the team, but it's definitely him too. Um, Aaron Josh, Rodgers, Josh, what do you Josh have? Allen, you Josh know. Allen. Yeah. Can you get, can you finally, can you guys finally get over the hump? Um, Daniel Jones, what are you? Were you worth this deal? I think we all know the answer to that, but still that's, that's floating out there. Justin Cal Fields, if he stays in Chicago, needs to have a monster year for them, or else everybody's going to second guess them not going after the first, you know, Caleb Williams. Kyler Murray making $46 yeah. million dollars a year, man. I mean, granted, he doesn't have the most around him, but, you know, he has a job to try to make that thing look as good as possible. Uh, Russell Wilson, what's going to be his future at $48 million? Uh, If, if we're being where? completely honest about this, there's only one quarterback in the NFL that we have zero questions about, and his name is Patrick Mahomes. Everybody else has some kind of everybody else has some kind of questions to answer. Lamar Jackson playoffs, right? Yeah. MVP season yeah. playoffs. That's why it's such a tough position. <laughs> it's like everybody, man, microscope, every single player. Right. Like that's now, why Jared you know, it's Goff. so easy. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's another guy. But I think Jared Goff answered questions this season. No, um, I, I do. I think I think he reestablished himself for two straight years where you're kind of like, that's not fluky. He's you know he's in yeah. a good spot. He's good. Yeah, but Stafford's you know it's so funny. Old. Yeah, Stafford's getting old, man. But you know what's so funny? It's so easy to get wrapped up in the Jalen Hurts side of things. But when you really look at the NFL as a whole, as far as the quarterback position goes, none of these guys outside of Patrick Mahomes, you know, are truly sitting on stable ground, be it with their organizations, be it with the narrative surrounding their careers, be it with the coaching staff. All these guys outside, if you're not Patrick Mahomes, you have plenty of questions to answer in your career. Um, and they're all valid questions. Yeah. Jalen Hurts isn't the only one. How about Brock Purdy? You know, we so yeah. and, and had a really good year, man. And I'm not you know, in any way, shape, or form blaming him for the Super Bowl loss. I'm not. But he he now is going into what is the last year of that deal, where mm -hmm. if he wants to get paid like you know the sick money that the the, the upper echelon get, he's going to have to be really good this upcoming year, and he may have to do it without Brandon Ayuk potentially. Yeah, Brandon Knight. I mean, um, Brock Purdy is the 60th highest paid Jeez. quarterback in the NFL. And they He's can't even, you know, they can't even negotiate with him until after this season. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yes. they, yeah, they can't. Yeah, they can't. Um, He's entering the second to last year of his deal. It's crazy. Um, he'll be a free agent in 2026. See, he here. here's the fascinating thing about the Brock Purdy situation real quick. Although he made it to a Super Bowl, they have no, they have nothing tied up into him. Right. If they feel if they have any question about him beyond this current contract, and we know how the Niners feel about their quarterback position, they feel like they can put anybody out there. That's how they feel. Mm -hmm. I mean, is 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 we saw great things from Brock Purdy, but do they believe they feel comfortable extending him with big money? Do they feel comfortable doing that? I'm not saying they do or they don't, but it's just a matter of they're in a situation where. They can kind of get they can they the, the Niners can kind of have a wandering eye when it comes to the quarterback position. Oh, for sure. I, well, the other thing is they've built this thing around a quarterback who isn't cost them anything. Like that's how you sign Hargrave, and and, and this is how you may be able to bring Ayuk back at least in the short term. Right, that, right. That's that's a big problem. Like if he does have another great year, and then all of a sudden you have to pay him, like the other teams are going through that are paying their quarterback. Because what happens is when you pay him. Then you're going to start to have to pull things away from him, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. now, and then you ask yourself, is he capable of picking up that extra load? And so far, you know, when I think it was a there was a three or four game span where he lost Trent Williams, Debo Samuel, and CMC. Yeah, and you saw him kind of come back to earth a little bit, you know. And look, 
all quarterbacks need their guys around them. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. But Brock Purdy, his situation is a little bit more unique because of the Niners and how they treat that position. Right. You know, that's not me taking away from his accolades. He's he's done a lot these past couple of years. Do not get it twisted. But I'm more concerned about the Niners than than him. I think that again, the Niners can have a wandering eye at that position. If they even feel slightly, you're not, you know, putting them in position. You saw how they did Jimmy, Jimmy G. And I think Brock Purdy proved that he was better in that situation than oh, Jimmy I, G. Yeah, I would take but, Purdy in a heartbeat over Jimmy G. Right, yeah. right. But you know, again, Bur Jimmy G got them to a Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, Brock Purdy hasn't done anything Jimmy G hasn't done for the Niners. It's true. And that's what it boils down to. Yeah. And if they feel like Brock Purdy has a limitation, they will have a wandering eye. They have not they, have, they are not afraid of it. Yeah. They got two years to figure it out though. Yeah, that you're right. If it, it, it stinks for him, but it's great for them because it's like almost like another tryout year mm -hmm. this upcoming season at nothing. At, you know, it's so little money. I mean, I got to imagine he is their by far their lowest paid starter. And I don't think it's even close. Oh, yeah, that's a good. That's a good question. He just might be. You're right. He I mean, he's not be. even making a, making a million dollars. I can't even imagine anybody else. Of, of his total four year, three point seven million dollar contract with the uh, with the um, Niners, the only seventy seven thousand is guaranteed out of three point seven million. Yeah, yep. seventy seven thousand. They can cut him. They can, they can cut him at any point, and they're only on the hook for seventy seven thousand dollars. It's the all-time deal for the Niners, for sure. All right, uh, that'll do it for us. I uh, want to thank everybody in the chat, everybody streaming, everybody listening. Remember, to, uh, tomorrow, uh, reminder tomorrow, that we'll have Scott Lauber from Clearwater. We'll continue with the Eagles talk, um, but don't go anywhere because we have the National Football Show coming your way with Tone and Dan Cilio. So, uh, Tone, have fun. I will see you tomorrow, my man. Thanks, yes, everybody. It's always a pleasure. It. See you then.